beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit The Spirit takes over your soul. When the Spirit takes over your soul, you will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit Hosea chapter 6. Tonight is a prayer meeting. I'll just be opening us up to the prophetic word for the year. First and foremost, I'd like us to understand that one of the things that we fight radically in this place is religion and the traditions of men. We never do things because they are the popular things to be done. Praise the Lord. I want you to know that the giving of prophetic words um, is not just some kind of um, church thing by leaders, you know, to be able to, let's say, our church or our ministry has this and that. No. It's, it's a communication of God's intent for a people and a territory. Hallelujah. To the end that when they understand God's program, and the way he's working. Now, I've had a lot of people in a bid to balance the abuse of prophetic words. I've condemned everything and said there's no need for prophetic words. When you understand, you see, that, that is the reason why it is important for us to understand the operation of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The operation of the kingdom defines the scope of the way God does his things. When you know God and you understand the system of the kingdom, then you will know why certain things are necessary. Praise the Lord. If you try to just copy, you may not be able to communicate the light that comes from that revelation. But when it is born out of a depth of understanding, then you will be able to guide people and they will receive breakthroughs in their lives. Are you following me now? And, and the Bible says God made many stars. Have you read that in Genesis? Right? And part of the ministry of those stars is that as the constellations over the earth, 
they are supposed to help men understand signs and seasons. Praise the Lord. Is that all the volume, please? Um, so if you understand that God made constellations to guide us into understanding times and seasons, that should tell you that the program of God is very specific and very seasonal. Are you getting my point? God does not just do anything, anytime. No, no, not at all. Although he dwells in the realm of eternity, right? When it comes to operating the principles of his kingdom here on earth, he subscribed to times and seasons. And so when the prophet will speak to the woman, he say, according to the time of life. Hallelujah. The Bible says he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit. When? In season. So there is a season. Praise the Lord. And it is important. One of the many things that happens when a season comes is that the graces, the mantles, the understandings and the, the communications of the spirit that will guide people into walking in sync with the program of God for that season is communicated to them. And let me tell you something. The hallmark of the apostolic ministry is not signs and wonders. You see, the apostolic ministry is a dispensational ministry. The true proof of an apostolic ministry is the ability to, number one, understand seasons. Number two, understand the communications and the revelation that is released to guide men into exploring that season. And then number three, to sustain the utterance in the spirit to interpret those mysteries so that the people of God can both understand, receive, and walk in light of what God is doing. Are you following me now? And so we must be able to understand. The Bible says wise men, they looked at the stars and suddenly they found out that one star was bright. And they knew it was not just a coincidence. Are you following me now? And on the strength of that spiritual advantage, they began to explore. And it took them around a manger. And so prophetic words are not just um, words that must happen January to December. And again, I've had a lot of people talk about January to December and say that it is not, maybe it doesn't make any spiritual sense. You see, when I hear talks like this, I, I don't feel bad for the people that communicate these things. It's only an expression of our deficiency of understanding spiritual things. Because if your journey to explore God starts from the Old Testament, you are lagging behind seriously. Your understanding of God must predate the Old Testament. So that it gives you an opportunity to see the consistency of his character through many dispensations. The word eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations. Are you following me now? please? And so it means that our dispensation is only in the middle of many dispensations that have gone before us and many to come after us. Is that true? But then the Bible gives us a picture of the consistency of the operation of the kingdom in the midst of these dispensations. For instance... There was a dispensation where the one we call Satan or Lucifer did not exist. Did you know that? Is that true? There was a dispensation where the earth was not a factor. Is that true? When you read the communications of Job, when he invoked God in chapter 38, he said, guard up thy loins as, as, a, as a man and I will demand of thee. He said, where was thou when I founded the earth? Tell me if you know, were you there when I laid its foundation, when I put the cornerstone? He said, when the morning stars sang together and the sons of God rejoiced. So you see that the concept of sons of God is not a New Testament concept. Our understanding about God and the kingdom must predate Genesis 1, predate Old Testament. So that it no longer becomes just an argument between Old Testament and New Testament. You are exploring the consistency of a being that has manipulated things according to his wisdom. From infinite dispensations past. The earth as we know our dispensation is barely six or seven thousand years. 
But we carbon date rocks and we see that some are as far as 50,000 years. Is that true? That means there is an old story. And if we do not understand this operation of God, we will find ourselves violating his system. And part of my personal pursuit during my retreat, I was telling the Lord that one of the things that I trust that God will use me to bring to this house is accuracy of alignment. That we will truly gain mastery in the understanding of the principles of the kingdom. And then it will make us to reign truly and experientially. And so the prophetic word is God's program of guidance for, for ministries, for territories. It's important for us to understand the language of God. He speaks um, dimensionally. In fact, he acts dimensionally. It is the dimensional character of God that gave birth to his names. All the names of God represent dimensions. And they, they also represent progressions of understanding him. So every dispensation is supposed to give God a name. And that name represents the scope of their experience with him. The names of God as we know so far represent his dealings and his revelations, the unveilings of himself across many dispensations. So while we lean on the strength of those revelations to gain access to who he really is, there is a lot more that he wants to reveal to us. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 before we come to Hosea. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for light. We thank you for light. Thank you for light. Genesis 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our own image and after our light. And let them have dominion upon over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 7 please. I'm just trying to establish a few things that will lead us to understanding the theme and then we'll pray. Are we there? Verse 7. Okay, it's projected. I think many of us can follow. As many as possible. And the Lord God did what? Formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. There's something I want to pick out here. When the Bible says God formed man from the dust of the earth, now, Adam was not just the name of that man. Hallelujah. When the Bible says God formed man, that the name of that formation itself is Adam. Are you getting my point now? Now, he said God made man from the earth, the dust of the earth. Now, there is a mystery there that I want you to understand. It doesn't just mean God used clay to make man. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because... According to ecology as we know, right? You will not be able to dwell in a system if you cannot relate with that environment. Is that true? So God made the spirit of man. But when it, come, it, it, it came to forming the body of man, the Bible says God made man, Adam. What, what it meant was that God used the raw materials of the system to fabricate the body of man. Are you getting my point? So that it will grant him the opportunity to be able to relate freely in this realm. The biological components of man, the psychological components of man were created from the materials within his environment. Are, are you following me now? Praise the Lord. So that there is a consistent interaction between the man, Adam, and the environment. And five elements work together to create man. Number one, light. Number two, wind. Number three, water. 
Number four, earth. Just follow me. What's number one? Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five, sound. Please just follow me. I want to establish something. Open our eyes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, these five elements, as we know, look up, please. They are the five elements that govern the interaction of man and his system. Are you following me now? Light, the earth, the food that we eat comes from where? Is that true? The water we drink, without water, you know that we will die. Meaning there is a relationship between the waters and the body of man. Is that true, please? The light, sunlight, as we know. You know that without light, there is no life. Is that true? And then, sound. Sound. Physics has gone so far to tell us a lot of the implication of sound. It has been established that we live in a planet that is governed by sound. Sound. Hallelujah. Business people have postulated theories to be able to let us know that your thoughts produce sound. That your life produces sound and it takes sound to be able to communicate and all of that. You are listening to me upon the strength of sound. We all know this just to be physics but I am telling you that all these elements were not of this realm. They were imported to help man become compatible. Just follow me. This is the reason why the description of the Holy Spirit in the Bible has been in the similitude of these elements. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And so when the Bible says God made man, what it means is that in the making of this body called Adam, these elements are found. That's why we drink water. Is that true? That's why we need light to see. You cannot see in darkness. You need light to see. You need sound to hear and do a lot of other things. We need the earth to be able to plant our crops. Mysteries. You open the ground and throw a seed and close it. And don't supervise it. You don't need a remote control. Something begins to happen that we cannot explain. Brothers and sisters, imagine the mystery of this earth. Is it living? You throw a seed. The earth has the resurrection power in it. You throw a seed and the Bible tells us that that seed dies. The earth without prayer brings it back to life. I'm showing you the elements of creation. Without prayer, no man can manipulate the earth. No matter your fight, you cannot be angry with the earth. Because it is spiritual. Number two, fire or light. Let's just call it light, really. But you can put light stroke fire. You cannot box light or box fire. You cannot monopolize it. You cannot do anything. It's an entity that is strange. It is not scared of anything, yet it threatens everything. Spiritual elements. Number three, water. A great mystery. Great mystery. You can't hold it, yet it has weight. Heavier than anything. Mysteries that surround our world that many of us may never get to really understand and appreciate. We see it all the time. What is the relationship between your body and water? Brothers and sisters, animals take water. Plants take water. Hallelujah. Meet a man who is dying of thirst. Give him water and he's rejuvenated. What does it do to him? It's more than biology. It's more than biology. Hallelujah. And then another mystery is even how the rain falls. Hallelujah. That vapor rises without the eyes of man seeing condenses in the atmosphere 
purest form by itself distills itself and begins to empty itself upon the earth. Mysteries that surround our world. And the Bible says man was made of these elements. Meaning if you corrupt any of these elements, it will translate into the corruption of man. Are you getting what I'm saying? You now see the reason why demonic spirits use these five elements for their operation. Satan is called the prince of the power of what? That's wind. Is that true? We see the Holy Spirit manifesting as the wind. We see the Holy Spirit manifesting as water. We see the Holy Spirit manifesting as light or fire. Now, I, I'm just helping you to appreciate the fact that it's not just that we, we stumbled across these things and we found them being used in Scripture. They are, in, they are not the only elements. Are you following me now? It is only because they are the elements that are important for the existence and the functionality of man. There are many other elements. But we know those five. Just like we have five senses. Is that true? But those are not the only senses. Now I know that people have taught great men like Papa Hagen and the rest. They've written books and they've said we also have spiritual, five spiritual senses. Of course you can look at the level and the, the, the dispensation with which he wrote those revelations. But now we know better. It cannot be that there are five senses. There are senses as infinite as the wisdom of God. That's why you can receive certain communications of the spirit that you cannot explain physically. Because the, the equivalent sense to help you interpret it is deficient. Are you getting what I'm saying now? God made man to interact with these things. So when I drink water, when I walk with the earth, when I take advantage of the illumination from light, right? And I, 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 I walk with these elements. They sustain my health. They sustain my vitality. And they help me to function in the earth. And it so happens that these elements, because they were imported from the spirit, when the Holy Ghost begins to function with this man, Adam, he also comes in the similitude of these elements. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he can manifest as light or fire. When he manifests as fire, it's a revelation of his dimension to be able to achieve certain things. When he manifests as wind or sound, he says that I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost was coming, a mighty sound, a rushing wind. Right? And so we see these operations of the spirit. The prophet said, O wind, breathe upon this slain. And the Bible says the wind came and entered them. And suddenly, the flesh, the sinews that came, came from the earth. It, I will cause sinews to come and cover the bones. Are you following me now? And so the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is in the similitude of these elements. That's why when you go to a herbalist, he will still use these five elements to concoct everything because he's working with man. Is that true? When you go, I've, I've, I've taught us already, but then let me just share it. The principle of reflection, we call it, that everything in creation should reflect its maker. Is that true? And because man is the hallmark of God's creation, everything in creation should be reflected in man. Is that true? And so I told you that the eyes of man was made from what? Water. Right? The similitude of vision. The same way that you go to a herbalist and it does incantations on water and suddenly that water becomes an eye and he starts seeing through it. Right? I told you that the hair of man was made in the similitude of grass. Is that true? That's why you can barb it and everything, you know, that similitude. The veins of man were made in the similitude of roots of plants. Is that true? The bones of man was made in the similitude of stones. That's why they can stay long even after, just like the stones. Are you getting what I'm saying? The body of man, this flesh was made from the earth. That's why it is compatible with the earth. When men die, where do we bury them? Not in the sky. We don't just hang them somewhere in the sky. Is that true? 
we bury them. He said, for dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. Is that true? That means you are dust. So when the Holy Spirit begins to function, he functions in these dimensions. Watch this. Notice the coexistence of wind, light, water, and all of this to keep you alive. Can you choose water and say there's no need for light? Is that true? You need all of these dimensions. Now, that's how it is spiritually. Every season, because rea realize that God is building another spiritual man. Is that true? He says, we all as living stones. There is a spiritual house God is attempting to build. And the name of that house, when completed, is called the bride of Christ. In her perfection. God is walking, molding. He said, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. Like an architect trying to build a mystery. Using the bride to make a bride. That bride that is spotless. And so based on that creation, God is using us and forming every element that needs to be in us so that as a church, we can be presented as that apostolic bride. Are you following me tonight? So the Holy Spirit reveals himself in different dimensions after the similitude of these elements of creation. And every one of his dimensions comes to initiate an understanding about God and to initiate a certain kind of function. Just like water. Water does not just do what light does. Water does not just do what wind does. But without wind, water cannot move. Is that true? There, there is a coexistence. When I began to seek the Lord this year, for the prophetic word he said I will reveal myself to my people as the rain the rain not just water, the rain that caught my attention for me I was very very excited very very excited because I know a bit about water and I, I have studied a bit but when the Lord began to give me that word I braced up, I was excited I received it into my spirit and very briefly I will just share with you certain things that will help us to align with the prophetic word of God. Hosea chapter 6 please from verse 1 to 3. Hosea chapter 6. Come and let us return unto the Lord for he hath torn and he will heal us. He had smitten and he will bind us up. Verse 2. After two days he will revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Verse 3. I want us to read it together. One to read. And he shall come to us as how? Hold on. He said, and he shall come to us. Meaning, this is how he has chosen to reveal himself. To make himself manifest in the midst of his people. Not a rain. He says, and he shall come to us as the rain. A combination of the former rain and the latter rain. Now, I don't want to go into the whole theology of the arguments about former rain, um, latter rain and all of that that's not our point of interest tonight but it's just for us to know that God wants to come and manifest himself this year 2015 as the rain the rain the rain what then is this rain very quickly what is the rain really I wrote a few things here and I'll just read them out so that we can have some notes the rain is a dimension of the outpouring of the spirit the rain is a dimension of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon people and territories that is responsible for activating certain spiritual realities. The rain 
it's a dimension of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon people and upon territories responsible for activating certain spiritual realities there are different spiritual realities because every dimension of the Holy Spirit helps you to access certain dimensions hallelujah when the Holy Spirit is revealed as fire there is a dimension of him that we can access on the strength of that revelation when he's revealed as rain or water or dew or whatever it is in that similitude when the Holy Spirit is revealed as oil when he's revealed as a dove, when he's revealed as all of these things, they all attempt to communicate certain dimensions of his operation and dimensions that can be accessible. Hallelujah. There are seven, seven dimensions or expectations I want us to have as the Holy Spirit reveals himself as the rain. Seven things happen in the life of any man and any territory when the Holy Spirit is permitted to reveal himself as the rain. We'll just run through it very quickly. Number one, when the Holy Spirit reveals himself to a people as the rain, there is an unusual dimension of soul winning. Unusual dimension of soul winning because harvest is tied to rain. Harvest is tied to rain. Hmm. Harvest is always tied to rain. He said in Isaiah chapter 32 from verse 15, he says, until the spirit be poured upon us. So he uses the language of the rain. Until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. And then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine. And then that vine will multiply and become a forest so one of the things that happens to a people or a territory when the Holy Ghost begins to manifest as the rain is that there are unusual dimensions of soul winning and transformation transformation we had our brother who came here and shared how that he had never seen me I don't know how probably without exaggeration thousands of people who say I have never seen you most people outside of this circle have seen me in either dreams or visions you see that the rain unusual dimension of soul winning and so that's one of the things we expect to see this year that there will be unusual dimensions that rain will pour on people you see when the rain begins to pour it does not select who to fall is that true? When it falls, it falls upon everyone and you must carry a trace of it. It will wet anybody, it will wet any car. That's the dimension of the spirit. So he will fall on unusual people. He will fall on business people. He will fall on students. He will fall on workers, unbelievers. You will see hardened criminals come to Christ. People who vowed by themselves, God forbid, over my dead body to be born again. You will see them come mysteriously. And then you will know that the rain fell on them. Hallelujah. People who hid at all have refused to accept Jesus Christ. You will argue with them. They will say, look, if, if Jesus is real, why are pastors this? You know, all those, all those arguments they bring. You will see them walk in dimensions. I tell you, you three o'clock, you will see them come to stand at Koinonia. Shaking, they cannot explain what brought them. The moment you see that, know that it is the rain. Because every time a rain will fall, you will see clouds. There is a sign. There is a rain. And that rain will fall. It will bring, I'm not talking of salvation of one leg here today and two legs out. You say, I had it. No, 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 no. Genuine that all your legs will be stationed and established in the kingdom. That's why I said so winning and transformation. You know, I've questioned a lot of what people call born again. Right? If you truly meet with this rain, there must be transformation. Hallelujah. All of those kinds of what I used to do before, I'm still doing it again after 10 years. I'm, you did not meet with the Holy Spirit. If you truly meet with the spirit of the living God, 
the spirit of the living. A donkey met with him and started talking. No rehearsals. Look, let me tell you, if the Holy Ghost meets with you, something must change. It has nothing to do with whether you have faith or not. There is an imprint. When rain comes, it does not ask you what kind of material. You live and there is an evidence. Have you seen rain come and then there is a nice lady who is wearing, um, what they call it, those you people's dangerous shoes that, that is pointed, you know, and she's trying to just run. The rain is whipping her, no regard for whatever she, whether it's with one or your natural hair or whatever hair, whether rain just comes. Lord, send that avalanche. We are tired of discussing with certain family members that will not change. In this season of the rain, the moment he's kicking the car, the car will not kick again. And the only, he can't open the door and he will hear a voice. And he will say, how long will you keep running away from me? Personal salvation. Genuine personal salvation. I want you to believe. Look, let me tell you, there are seven things. This is number one, but this is major. Every one of us must participate cooperating with this rain. Because when, when rain falls, there are certain people who can... How many of you have seen rain fall and then some people bend their zinc strategically to make sure that water enters some vessels? That's how some of us will be. You will say, this rain is almost reaching my uncle. Oh Lord, where is that zinc? You must tilt it to touch him. Oh no, look, let me tell you. There will be massive salvation this year. It's called anakazo. A compelling evangelism. Not, not too much of drama and they are asking you, did you quote it correctly? Do you know that that means you are not a serious believer? And then what would have been a, a simple encounter becomes three hours of foolish argument. The Bible calls it vain talk. Right? You keep arguing whether is this and that. Should this person do this? Does your church do this? When the rain comes. When the rain comes. Some of you, all you will need to tell somebody is come. Jesus looked at them and said, come. No argument. That's how they got up. Because that rain comes with it a dimension of the spirit. Do you believe that? Number two. Halabakata. When the rain comes, we will experience increased dimension of love for God and passion for spiritual things. Listen to me. Every time rainy season comes, it supplies energy upon the farmer to go to the farm. Is that true? When he sees the rain, he's excited. When the rain falls, every one of us, every one of us, must fall in love with God. It comes, it's a dimension of the Holy Spirit that all of a sudden makes Jesus become a priority in your life. So it's not just the issue of being fanatical. He emphasizes the priority of the things of the kingdom, the house of God, evangelism, prayer, your, your passion for spiritual things come alive. Jesus must become a priority in our lives this year. Not an option. Many of us love the Lord, but there are many distractions. Jesus is not a priority to many of us. But this year, this season of the rain, hallelujah. Listen, listen. Let me tell you one of the things that the rain does. The rain washes away filth. There are many things that have covered our eyes and our lives that would stop. Some of us love God, but there is a devil seated on our face called our mouth that will not allow us to serve God well. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your spirit wants to serve God, but your mouth, this mouth is, is, is an empire, is Babylon seated on your face. And if you don't tame it, let the rain wash away that thing, that feeling. There are many of us, our lives, this is the year when you say, Lord, let this rain come. Passion. 
during my retreat I said Lord I really want to love you I don't want to fake it I know that I love you you know people send me a text and say may God give me one tenth of your love for God I said really you've not seen anything yet madly in love for some of you may God give you the kind of love you have for women may God convert it to be love for him in the name of Jesus Christ. In 2015, may it happen. No, we're here to enforce it tonight. Because, see, the way many of us love things that are not God, money, reputation, women, men, intellect, now, I'm not against all of those things, but I am telling you, remember, part of the things we do here is to make sure we strangle every idol to death. There is only one that deserves our praise. We will lay down our idols and thrones we have made and all that has taken my heart. Lord, I will bow. I will bow to you, to no other God but you. Listen, can I tell you one strategy of the devil? One strategy of the devil to, to filter or draw away our love and passion for God is activities. Say activities. That was the strategy Pharaoh used. When Moses was coming to connect them back to God, Pharaoh said, ah, it's because you are free. I've not occupied you enough. That's why you even have time to consider an exodus. He said, occupy them. What I was giving them free, let them look for it. And that's one thing that the devil is using to destroy our generation. Ask an average young man, why are you busy like this? Four o'clock, you are awake. Sorry, I don't have time. Ba -ba -ba -ba, Lord, I thank you. You are, I mean, if you were not alive, I wouldn't have woken up. Now that I'm awake, I really thank you. And you're on your way moving. We are on the go. We have fast food. If you are hungry, enter quickly. Five minutes, you are out. This kind of life will never produce passionate people. There must come a time in your life where you must define who is worth your time. Ha! Ah. You've won my heart, oh God. You've won my heart. Don't let Nigeria fool you. You are not the first to be successful. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ask Abraham. Ask Isaac. Ask Solomon. These were men who pursued God. But with that pursuit, they were successful. Take away that useless theology that the devil has given Nigerians. That if you don't get up and hustle and push... If one door closes, force another one to open. What do we call it? Hustling. In this year of the rain, may God help you to know what matters. You have only 24 hours. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land. All I want There are many of us, we don't care about the house of God. The, the house of God, come for koinonia. Eh, oh yeah, let me just drag myself and come, you know. And you come and you are waiting for everybody to tell you thank you. This is the year you tell that devil, if you, if you took advantage of my life in 2014, in this year, I mean business with God. Hallelujah. This is the year to throw away that small jotter that fire has burned half of it and buy a good hardcover exercise book and say Lord I mean business look let me tell you brothers and sisters it says after two days he will revive us and on the third day he will raise us up this was my cry during the retreat I said Lord I don't love you enough I searched my life to find out all the things that are still in the remaining time and I said Lord I will give you time more because intimacy is a function of time. It's not just about quoting koinonia. Intimacy is highly time dependent. 
For the more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. Spend time. In this season of the rain, many of you, let me tell you, you will find out 4 o'clock, 4.30, the Holy Ghost will wake you. Mm, sleep goes away. No matter the tiredness, you know that is the season of the rain. And you get up and play worship songs. I want more of you. Some of you, this season of the rain will take you back to what you used to do that brought grace upon your life that you have thrown away. There are some of us here, especially the ladies, you know what you used to do. When it was not the issue of men, huh? when it was not the issue of beauty, before you rediscovered yourself, that depth of passion. Some of us don't wake up in the morning again. You sleep by 8 o'clock, you wake up by 9 o'clock. Spiritual carelessness. You don't care, you don't pray for two weeks, it's none of your business. You check the way you drop your note on your Bible last Koinonia Friday. That's how you pick it next Koinonia. You just say, Lord, I thank you. Speak to me. Look, it must change in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let there be passion. Passion. Some of us were lied to our roommates. Right now, they are the ones advising you. Huh? Look at how spiritual drought came and stole your fervency. But no more. I said no more. In this season of the rain. Ah, cold. It's too cold. I can't serve God. Or oh, the trouser I wanted to wear is not there. I wore blue last week. Blue this week. I can't go for koinonia. You are not serious. When this rain pours on you, you will pick up that trouser and wear. And say, whether... Whether it's blue or black. I want more of you. Priorities that will change. Your priorities must change. You went to make your hair. They made half. They've not made the other half. Carry cap and cover it. Come for God. See, ask people and know the silly reasons why they refuse to come to the house of God. Very silly reasons. Someone said, I don't have transport. But let the guy say, oh yeah, come, let's talk. You, you, there is energy. Or, well, or the lady says, okay, I'm waiting for you at 90s. See the guy say, I'm coming. When he was talking, it was around dark. But you will be walking. Lord, I receive strength. I cover ground. And you cannot come to the house of God. In this year, 2015, may God give us passion. Oh, let, let this rain come. And let people see the difference between them and God in your life. Yeah. Are you getting my point? Let the guy know you love him, but when he comes to God, he is truly secondary. Without apology. What, if you put anything and God, don't even ask me which one. Anything that is not God has lost, including myself. If I'm secondary to God, what makes you think you will be primary? More of you. More of you. More of you. Jesus, more. Sing more of you. More of you, sing more of you, more of you, Jesus, more of you, Jesus, more of you. Yes, it's called an awakening. The Bible says, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you light. Please, you need to talk to your neighbor, say, Wake up this year. Reignite your passion for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sit down five minutes prayer. Oh Lord, I thank you. No, 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 no. You have to give God time. You have to give God time. 
Say, I will give God time. He will become a priority in my life. Yes. Nothing else matters. Look, let me tell you something. I was talking with my auntie. She lost her, her son, eldest son, the one who would, you know, be the next of kin. And when I went to her, um, when she heard I was in ministry, in her mind she said, ah, this young man, according to her, she said, this young man, so intelligent. You mean that's what you really want to do with your life? You know, people make it look like, ah, you mean this is it? Now, but when her son died, when I went to her, she said, if I knew, I would have served God like you in the days of my youth. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Whether you believe in immortality or not, we are not going to be here forever. Just settle that in your mind. Is that true? Jesus said, I must walk the works of him. Five minutes without breathing, nobody will ask you all the PhDs you got. Are you aware of that? Nobody will ask you what your CGPA was. Please let me remind you. Nobody will ask you whether you, you got married or not. As important as these things are, if you have not sat down to think about them, I want you to know that there is only one thing that will matter at the end of your life. We used to sing a song um, when I was in secondary school, one Anglican song, only remembered for what we have done. You know the song? Very powerful song. So by and large, hear me, if you keep distracting yourself and not giving God time, everything that you are giving time for now, will it secure your eternity? That's the question. You are giving your whole life to a man, yet you cannot give God. A man you cannot trust. A man who can come and say, I've changed my mind. Kai, I've changed my mind. A, a, a lady who can come and say, you know, the only constant thing in life is change. Yet you say, I give you my all. You even say it happily. Please don't laugh. I came with the fire from my retreat. Make sure you are not just laughing carelessly. I'm communicating something very serious. Passion. That you must not come for koinonia for people to see the passion. People will look at Morgan and say, what is this? This fire you have. Why is it just God all the way? God in lecture theater, God everywhere. Are you this fanatical? Absolutely. Absolutely. He said, if you are ashamed of me before men, listen, if you are ashamed of me, I've seen people die. Brothers and sisters, I've had the privilege to to, to go and minister to bereaved families. I've prayed for people in hospitals. I have seen in my little life the vanity of life. That's not to make you not to get up, but I know that I plan to spend my life on what matters. That at the end of my life, when I stand before him, let me carry mantles of souls and say, Lord, I spent my life I spent my life to the last serving. One general that we honor forever, Dr. Miles Munro, a man who cheated death left and right, front and back. There are men who have cheated death. This year, please let there be an awakening. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. For some of us, it is to return to your first love. Ha! Huh. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire. Lord, don't let my life go cold. Let me not be busy doing ministry and forget my relationship with God. Let me not be busy doing ministry, ministering, traveling around, and everybody is shouting Apostle Joshua Selman, whereas my personal intimacy with God is faulty. See, let me tell you, men can clap for you, but this is the year you say, Lord, I want to be genuine. I'm tired of pretense. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm tired of people looking at me like a Christian, thinking that I love God 
walking based on yesterday's anointing yesterday's oil walking based on the applause of yesterday whereas my today is faulty number three when the rain falls it brings unusual access into the mysteries and the operations of the kingdom this is one of the things that we are going to be experiencing in this year of the rain. Unusual access into the mysteries and the operations of the kingdom. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Please media, you help us. We have to really be fast. Deuteronomy 32 verse 1 and 2. Let me show you a scripture. Deuteronomy 32 verse 1 and 2. Mambroski, brother, Shilaba. Okay, let's just watch. Okay. It says, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Verse 2. Read together. How? My doctrine, my mysteries, I will give you certain revelations, and it will come in the similitude of the rain. It will, it will be an avalanche. It will come in abundance. Hallelujah. My secrets, my mysteries will come upon you as the rain. No matter how the drizzle is, if you channel it well, it can fill buckets. It says, my doctrine shall drop. It says, my speech shall distill as the dew. Hi abundance some of you will open genesis and you'll be reading genesis for months because you will see things there that you never saw and god said that will be the revelation you'll be exploring for two weeks and god said a sound planet that it moves with words and god said my doctrine my mysteries will fall upon koinonia like rain so that you will begin to see the puzzles joined together. That these are the keys. These are the operations of the spirit that activate certain dimension of kingdom realities. Brothers and sisters, hear me. The Bible says it has been given unto us to know. The word know is the word intercourse. The same word like a man knowing his wife. It has been given unto us to intercourse. That's the word epignosis. A state where you know a thing by becoming that thing. Not just by hearing about it. It's an operation that only exists in the spirit. So in the spirit, if I want to know how this speaker is, I will have a feeling of becoming it. Accurate knowledge. My doctrine shall come upon you like the dew. So that many things we have believed that are confusing us and stopping us from experiencing the reality of God. When there is an avalanche of access to the mysteries of God. Some of you will begin to find out what is responsible for the tragedies and the operation of darkness in our families. And you will know what to do. He said Jesus himself knew what to do. This year may you know what to do. Because in the kingdom we arise and we shine when light comes. We reign upon the strength of light. Not when your light is available. When it comes. When it comes. He said, they that have sat in darkness have seen a great light. A great light. A great light. A great light. Daniel chapter 2 verse 19. There is a God that can show men mysteries. There is a God. We are going to contend for mysteries. We'll look at verse 19, 22, and 47. Long story, a king had a dream and forgot it and said, if you don't tell me what this dream is and the interpretation, I will kill you. Very simple. Hallelujah. The king had a dream and he forgot it. And he gathered all the soothsayers and wise men and said, I don't know what you will do. Go and invoke whatever you can invoke. But if you don't tell me this dream, I guarantee you, you will die. And the Bible says Daniel asked for time. He said, give me time. Everybody say time. Hmm. You, don't, you, 
don't want revelation, God is not Mr. Biggs or Chicken Republic. You say, Lord, as I'm going, just let it come. I, I didn't have time to prepare. Now that I'm going for the meeting, let it just drop as I'm coming. Don't take the mercy of God for granted. It takes time. Daniel told the king, he said, I can tell you, but I need time. Because it's in the place of intimacy that you experience that reign. And he said, then was what? The secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. And Daniel blessed the God of heaven. In the night, while men were snoring and sleeping, the rain came. And when it came, he said, Daniel, this is it. Sit down, you are about to watch a movie. And he saw Nebuchadnezzar sleeping. And he saw what happened. Verse 22. This was Daniel acknowledging God. He said he revealed what? The deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness. And, the, and light dwelleth with him. Brothers and sisters. May God show us the things that are hidden in darkness. That have been responsible for the stagnation of our lives and our families. As this rain falls, let, let it expose things. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let's just leave verse 47. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10. The Bible makes us to understand that the Holy Spirit is able to access the mind of God. Have you read that scripture? That the Holy Spirit can reveal to us the things that are in the mind of God. Right? Scripture makes us understand that no man knows the heart of a man save the spirit of that man. And the spirit of God has access to the mind of God. And is able to reveal it to us. He said, but God had revealed them to us. How? By his spirit. That will manifest himself as the rain. He said, for the spirit searched all things. Yea. May God grant unto us uncommon revelation in this year of the rain. Number what now? Number four. When the rain falls, one of the things that we experience is multiplied dimensions of spiritual power and the anointing. Multiplied dimensions of spiritual power. When you plant a seed and bury it, the moment the rain falls, that seed begins to push above the earth against gravity and it comes out. Spiritual power. A Christianity that does not demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit is child's play. There is only one language that is understood in the realm of the spirit and is the language of power. When Moses stood before Pharaoh, I was watching the, a, a, a lovely cartoon yesterday. I don't watch most of, uh, I don't have time self to even watch cartoons. But one caught my attention. Pharaoh, Moses in Egypt. And I mean, it was, it was, it was well animated. I was so touched. Better than many of the things we have watched before. I mean, very, very, very nice and very graphic. When Moses got there, there was no room for long stories. The rods were speaking. This is the year, by the grace of God, where there will be a demonstration of the power of the Spirit. This is a place of power. There must be miracles upon miracles. Breakthrough upon breakthrough. We must, it must be evident that the rain is falling. If you believe that, say amen in the name of Jesus Christ. Resulting to an outbreak of miracles, signs, wonders, breakthroughs, healings. It's impossible to have the Holy Spirit reveal himself as the rain. And will not have healings and miracles. And it will start this night. This night, not next week. This very night. Hallelujah. Some of you, you, you carry the atmosphere of this rain. And step into places. And you see the sick get healed. Look, we need to restore the church to the signs that characterize that God is at work and at alive in people. We trivialize the place of the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we have a lot of arguments in the body of Christ. 
We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And by the grace of God, this place will become a habitation of not just his presence, but his power. Let the sick come and be healed. Let the oppressed come and be delivered. Not, not long stories. There are many things in our lives that do, doesn't require counseling. We need a head-on collision with the power of God. And it solves the problem once and for all. Some diseases will die a natural death when they meet the power of God. He said the yoke shall be destroyed, not by oratory. He said because of the anointing. When the rain falls upon us, there will be levels of grace. When God was showing me little visions of things that will happen in the year, and I saw some of the things, I said, my goodness, oh Lord, do these things. Let nothing restrict you. Look, brothers and sisters, you will see a demonstration of the power of the Spirit this year that will shock you. Not just from here, not just from my life, from your own life. From your own life. Your hands will do mighty things. Look at your hands and say, this year, you will do mighty things. Please, I want you to believe it. Look at your hands and say, this year, you carry an unusual unction. And you will do mighty things. So we'll see multiplied dimensions of grace. Multiplied dimensions of miracles. Signs, wonders. Manifestations of the power of the Holy Spirit. Next point. When the wind, when the, the rain of the Spirit falls upon us. Now take note of what I'm about to share. It will bring unusual dimensions of wealth, prosperity, and abundance. For sure. Rain. Now agriculturally speaking, rain is tied to abundance and fruitfulness. Is that true? And one of the things that the Lord spoke to me again and again very notably that will happen in the lives of people is an avalanche of prosperity. I know that many of us have had these things again and again, but please, I want you to believe. Hallelujah. Prosperity. I believe in prosperity. Absolutely. Joel chapter 2, please. For time's sake, we'll just look at verse 24 and 26. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. It says, and the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. It says, and ye shall eat in what? Plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people, in terms of finances, shall never be ashamed. Do you believe that? God is going to change the stories of people. Look, it will be, the Bible says, when the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion. For many of us, it will be like a dream. People will look at you. Without the assistance of any uncle or auntie, you will rise. It will be a mystery. God will use you to prove that the rain has fallen upon your land. Genesis chapter 2. You do mighty things, you do glorious things. You're a faithful God, awesome is your name. 2 verse 5. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 5. Listen, it says... And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. He said, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was no man to till the ground. When you read the verse before it, it says how that there was no vegetation. Why? Because the rain had not come. When the rain falls, fruitfulness begins immediately, immediately. There is a relationship between that dimension of the spirit and your prosperity. And I want you to believe it. I have prayed this into my own life. I have received it. I believed it with all my heart. This year, I will not argue with the word of God. Leviticus chapter 26 from verse 4. Leviticus 26 from verse 4. I'm giving us this scripture. Let's hurry up and we'll pray. 
Shida bakata balaraba. Leviticus chapter 26 from verse 4. It says, then I will give you rain. When? And this is the season. The Lord has spoken to us. He said, I will give you rain in due season. And what will be the result? And the land shall yield her increase. And the trees of the field shall yield her fruit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May that happen for somebody. Brothers and sisters, I have learned in my little life that the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Hallelujah. Joseph slept in one night as a servant, as a slave, a property of Egypt. He woke up the next day as the man in command. That would be somebody's story. When the gentleman shared about his UK, um, you know, um, the blessings of the Lord, in my mind I said, that is a drop. We are talking of an ocean an ocean of the, the avalanche of what God will do. Men will look at you and say, whose head did you cut? You will say, no. No. It's the rain. It's the rain. Do you believe this? Or has your suffering of the past blinded you and say, it's like that. It came like that. Do you not believe that God is able to make a table in the wilderness. He said they limited God by saying, can God make a table in the wilderness? A table. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 14. Just look at that and then we'll touch on the remaining. I have to run. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 14. I just want to give us scriptures. I want you to read if you believe. Want to read everyone? What will be the result? It didn't say your neighbor's corn. There is, there is a, listen, there is an apportioning for you. Listen, this year is not the time you sit down and clap for others and say, you mean God did it for you? Hallelujah. You must insist. Please believe. If you've never believed God for anything, why don't you connect and believe this year? He said that thou mayest gather thy corn. And what? And what? Three things. Your corn, your wine, and your oil. When the rain falls, your corn, plenty, plenty, he will cause you to experience it. What else? Do we expect two more, right? Number six, supernatural restoration. When the rain falls, in Joel chapter two, the coming, the outpouring, the rain and the spirit brought about the restoration. He said, and I will restore to you the years. Verse 25 of Joel chapter 2 and I will restore to you the years I will restore to you opportunities I don't care whether it was carelessness I don't care whether it was armed robbery I will restore everybody shout restore. restore we have come to enforce it the Bible says they are taking for a prey and none say it restore 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 he said turn again the captivity of Zion like the streams of the Negev. For many families here, that the devil has made it look like his Ichabod. In this year, when the rain falls, you will see a tree that was dry. You almost want to use it for firewood. God will say, don't cut it. At the scent of water. At the scent. He said there is hope for a tree. Even if it be cut off. At the scent of water. I'm prophesying to someone here. It looks like you are in a, a state in your life. Some of us think we have messed it up. There is no way. There is no human way. But that's when God is needed. If it's still possible for you, God will be resting. But when it's impossible, he will arise. And I'm speaking to someone. The way God will change your story this year. It will shock you. God, one by one. God will restore everything to the latter. Even what you said, God, is not necessary. God will say, no, no, no. I'm too committed. Restoration. Joy and peace. 
restoration for the days of tears restoration academic restoration financial restoration marital and relational restorations hmm. he said rejoice not over me my enemies he said though i fall yet i will rise while you are sitting down discussing that i died jesus died for only three days while you are discussing they say no he has risen you are talking about a man who only died for 72 hours some of you you have been subjects of discussion in your family they looked at you and said look at huh? it's better to even be an idol worshiper you are mocking god but this year my father will arise you will see God revisiting things that happened 10 years ago and say, I must prove a point. It's not necessary, but they have mocked my name in your life. Do you believe this? I believe it with all my heart. I believe it with all my heart. I believe it with all my heart. God is able to restore. I like you to say, God is able to restore. And there is nothing you can't do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh There is nothing you can do, and there is absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Oh Lord, see him wiping your tears in this year of the rain. You can't cry forever. That will be your song when God changes your story. Let men talk. Don't try to defend yourself. There is a defender, the God of your salvation. Oh Lord, oh Lord, be magnified. my little life that you don't cry forever are you hearing what I'm saying just let the rain fall <laughs> when that rain falls you will see restorations that you cannot account for you can't even explain how it happened Joseph how did you become a prime minister honestly I don't know all I know is that I woke up that morning and by evening I was on a throne. Esther, how did a villager like you become the king's wife? I don't know. I didn't instigate Vashti to look for trouble. All I know is that the rain fell. See, when I say the last point, you will know what I'm saying. This year, there will be the falling of many and the rising of others. Trust me. Many who have made mouth and concluded on others, you will see God take people that you mocked and sat down and they will rule you. you <laughs> be careful as you speak over people because brothers and sisters, there are others who have even said, God, take my life and God said, are you joking? Wait and see how I, I, I will write my name upon your life and any man that sees you will know that God is able to restore me. He says, son of man, can these bones live again? Can these bones live again? He said, only thou knowest. Only thou knowest. The rain will fall. And things will change. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The last thing that the coming of the rain will do. Is that the rain brings judgment upon people and territories 
who oppose God's agenda. Oh yes, there will be a rain. I told you that there will be the falling of many and the rising of many. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. Let's hurry up. After that, we'll look at chapter 19 verse 24. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. It says, For yet seven days I will cause it to do what? To rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made, I will destroy off from the face of the earth. So, the rain does not just come to bless. There is a dimension of the rain that brings judgment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When it, when it was time to judge the world, it was water. Rain came and caused judgment. There are people who have sat down and believed that they hold the destinies of people in their hands. This year, they will receive of that rain for sure. For sure, that rain will come. Listen, two things happened when it began to rain in Noah's days. It was killing all the people who were laughing at Noah. I said, Noah, for how many years? Noah, we were young, go. We were young. Those days when you were 70 years, you were a teenager. They say, well, we were teenagers. You were Now, 120 years, you are still building an ark. Noah said, I know. 120 years ago, he told me rain will fall and it will still happen. And when it was time, God said, Noah, enter your ark. I will close the door by myself. When he closed the door, he said, rain, you are free to come. While the rain was killing others, it was lifting another man's ark. Same rain. Are you seeing that now? The rain was drowning noisemakers and those who have laughed at what God can do. But it lifted the ark of Noah and kept it on a mountain called Mount. Ararat. Hallelujah. That rain. Many of you will hear this year that the evil doers that have refused, they, they are 95 years old, they say we won't die. We are sitting to see how you will get married when that rain falls. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, there are men who have exchanged their life for others. Is that true? In this year of the rain, God will bring to justice. I tell you, it's, it's, there is no prayer of mercy. It's called a written judgment. It's a judgment that has been stamped and it must be executed. Hallelujah. The rain bringing judgment. Two scriptures, you can just write it quickly. Genesis chapter 19 from verse 24 and Exodus chapter 9 verse 23. Genesis 19, 24 Exodus 9 23 you don't have to project it but all of these things talk about rain one time the Egyptians made noise against God rain came rain of hailstones brimstones it came and landed upon all of them there will be rain this year in this country Nigeria there will be rain I saw it in visions there are people you see bragging today they will not see August this year I'm telling no 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 it's, it's the truth they will die not just they would die shameful deaths. God will sign upon their death that I did it. The same way terrorists take responsibility. They say we are the ones that remove that head. David removed the head of Goliath and lifted it up. I'm the one who did it. God will do certain things and leave his signature and say I did it. Hallelujah. Before we quickly pray, what does it take to experience the rain? We've told us what will happen, what the rain brings. What does it take to experience the rain very quickly? Number one, genuine hunger for more of God. You want to experience the Holy Spirit as the rain this year. It's not just as a prophetic word. Isaiah 44 verse 3, very quickly. Genuine hunger for more of God. That rain will only flow to those who are hungry. Those who are thirsty. Those who are serious with God. He said, for I will pour water upon who? Him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. In that similitude, I will pour out my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. You must be hungry. 
You must be desirous for more of God. You must be desirous. That's what it takes. You must have genuine hunger. Number two, you must have a determination to see his kingdom come. The rain does not just come for nothing. The purpose of the rain is for the harvest. The purpose of the rain is to introduce a new season. You must have a determination to see his kingdom come across lives, across territories. That means if the priorities of the kingdom are not an important thing, you don't need the rain. Why do you need the rain? If you do not have a determination to see his kingdom come. So you must be determined that this year, my partnership, koinonia, my partnership with God to see his kingdom come will be uncompromised. Number three, what does it take to experience the rain? Prayer. Say prayer. Heartfelt, continual prayer. Zechariah chapter 10, please, verse 1. Heartfelt prayers. You want to see the rain, you must pray it. You pray down the rain. Zechariah chapter 10. Zechariah 10 verse 1. We have it. Everybody read. One, two, read. Stop. He said, do what? Ask. Don't wish. He said, the moment you sense the season has come, start asking. Ask ye of who? The Lord. The owner. The owner. Ask him and say, Lord, this is the season. Let the rain come. He said, ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So shall the Lord make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. Listen, listen. We are going to ask because he said we should ask. This is the season of the rain. There's going to be a great awakening. There's going to be a great revival in our land. There's going to be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. He said, ask for the rain. Zaria is our territory, it's our jurisdiction. Hallelujah. We must pray and say, Lord, give us the keys of this city. Give it to us. In this season of the rain, we ask for the rain. Massive salvation. Massive prosperity. Massive signs and wonders. A demonstration of the spirit that will make us walk like gods upon this city. Hallelujah. More grace. Fresh anointing upon the messages. Fresh anointing upon the people. Increase of all sorts. Numerically, spiritually. All these things are the things that come with the rain. Testimonies and miracles for people. That in this year the barren will take their children. That in this year many people's situation will change. These are the things that happen when the rain comes. Hallelujah. James. Let's look at an example of one person who prayed and the rain came. James chapter 5, please. Shila Oh, I already feel the anointing of the Spirit. My goodness. James. James chapter 5. We'll read verse 16 and 18. There's no need reading verse 17. He said, confess your faults to one another and pray one for another that ye might be healed. Let's read the second clause. Are you ready? One to read. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availed much. And let's see an example. Verse 18. 
He said, and he prayed again. He had prayed and the heavens were shut and there was no rain. And when it was now time for the rain to come, what happened? He went back and the Bible says he prayed again and the heaven gave rain. And as a result, the earth brought forth her fruit. So we are going to be praying. He said, ask ye rain. Ask ye rain. Whenever you see clouds forming, it tells you rain wants to come. That's why he began to pray. And he told the servant, go and check. The servant said nothing. He said, I will still pray. But when he saw clouds forming, he said, that is it. That is it. Pray. And the heavens gave rain. Financial rain. Spiritual rain. All kinds of things. We are going to see the hand of God in a very mighty way. God is going to lift us and exalt us in ways that will honor him. God is going to make a spectacle out of us. And the goal of this first meeting tonight is to bring us into agreement. Because you must agree. That's the purpose of this little exhortation. To bring us to a point where you say, Lord, that is it. I, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it for my life. I refuse to argue. It's my season. Not koinonia season. It's my season of the rain. My season of, not a rain, the rain. I have exact expectations. We are going to be praying. And you're going to be telling the Lord, as far as it depends on me, I'm ready to play my own role. Just supply the grace. And I tell you, for many of you, January will not end. Because he said he will bring that rain in the first month. Beginning from the first month. Many of us will begin to see things happen. It's 16 days. And, and it does not take time. When rain comes, it's an avalanche. It may take time to see the formation. But if the cloud be full of rain. Except they are not full. He said they empty themselves upon the earth. Hallelujah. And so we trust God. That he will reveal himself. There will be such an outpouring. Upon the campus there will be outpourings of the spirit. Outpourings everywhere. That from this place like, 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 like infernos of fire. It will shoot to territories. One of, my, one of my goals this year. Is that all of the external ministrations that God will grant me grace. I want to take this rain to those territories. Hallelujah. My focus this year is to take this rain to territories. There are people that must catch this rain. Hallelujah. I will be a dispenser of this rain. A dispenser of this rain. That you step into a place and you cause bright clouds to be opened. And rain, rain just comes upon people. Unlimited breakthroughs. I told God, I said, I'm I'm more than ready. I am I'm more committed to this work like never before. We're having our retreats tomorrow. The leaders and the workers in the house. And part of the many things we're going to be discussing is how to refire ourselves. To position ourselves first to receive of this rain and to be dispensers of this rain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so the Lord is going to grant us grace. We are going to do three things very quickly before we conclude this service. Number one is we are going to pray. And I want everybody to participate inside and outside. I know that there are some of you, there's no space all around. Don't worry. Find a corner and pray. This is about your life. We are going to be praying. All of the seven expectations become your expectations for the year. We will pray it. And we will pray for grace. That dimension of the spirit to be able to play our own part. Hallelujah. And after that, I believe that God is going to release upon us the supply of his spirit to ignite this grace. It's an anointing service. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and lift your voice and begin to thank the Lord for this word. Give him thanks. Give him thanks everywhere, inside and outside. Lord, I thank you. 
Lord, I thank you. Thank you for your prophetic word. It's my season of the rain and outpouring of the dimension of the spirit upon my life. I thank you. Hallelujah. Your voice and pray. Lord, I receive it. I receive it. It's not just a word for koinonia. I receive it. Lord, we receive it. Lord, we receive it. Hallelujah. Pick up your notebooks. Prayer point number two. We are going to pray all those seven expectations. If you can help us, media, fine. If it's down, no problem. Hallelujah. Those seven expectations from massive salvation of souls, one by one, salvation of, of souls, increased love and hunger for God, access to mysteries, multiplied spiritual power, dimensions of wealth, restoration, judgment. One by one, you're going to personalize it for yourself, for your family. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Please take it seriously. Lord, a harvest of souls. A harvest of souls. Let the rain bring salvation. Let the rain bring transformation. In the name of Jesus Christ. As we travel around the regions of this nation, as we travel even beyond the borders of this nation, thank you, salvation, the rain, the rain of your spirit, bringing salvation, the rain of your spirit, bringing salvation, the rain of your spirit.
Lord, you will restore. You will restore. Restore destinies. Restore opportunities. Restore anointing. Restore mantles. Restore visions. Restore dreams. Restore graces. Let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. Lord, we demand a restoration of all the years that the Kanka worm has eaten, the Palma worm. We command a reversal of opportunities that have been lost. We declare judgment, judgment, the rain will bring judgment upon evil doers, judgment upon wicked men, judgment. Hallelujah. The seventh thing we say that will happen is that God will bring judgment. Hear me? There are men who have tied down the counsel of God over families. There are powers, there are forces that tie down the destinies of men. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Still on that point. The Lord, as the rain falls, these powers 
these forces we command judgment they must crumble because I must rise this year lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray pray like a believer oh yes the forces of darkness ancestral forces covenant yokes of bondage Jesus paid the price already Jesus paid the price in you Jesus paid the price already Jesus paid the price in you therefore we lose him back on account of the substitutionary sacrifice on the account of the Lord Jesus we get in hand and get the judgment upon the hands of the Hallelujah. 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 Now, before we cry for a supply of grace as we start the year, I'd like you to mention one thing that you know you need this rain to do in your life. Hallelujah. There are many things and we have prayed about some of them. But for adventure, there are expectations that many of us have. I'd like you to lift your voice and say, Lord, I make a demand. This is the season of the rain. This and that must happen in my life. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Pray. Outside, make sure you're praying. Everywhere outside, make sure you're praying. Hallelujah. Are we together? Someone can watch what just happened here now. This manifestation of the anointing and be uncomfortable with it. Are we together now? And then go to a church where he sees a man of God holding somebody's head and turning the head around and use that singular case to mean anytime you are ministering to people under the anointing is an error. No, sir. You see, true correction must come from a standpoint of love. Anything outside of the scope of love is jealousy, is bitter envy. Are we together? So those who help in deviating the body of Christ from the precepts of God, those who are indifferent about it because of their self-centeredness, and then those who in a bid to supposedly bring correction. Let me tell you something. Please look up. I say this with every sense of humility. Not every man of God is authorized to correct the body of Christ. Read your Bible. You don't just stand up and think because you have something to say. There is, there is a throne. There is an authorization like a spiritual pass that is given unto people by election of grace that authorizes them to be able to define the boundaries of the spiritual operation of the body of Christ. It's not just because you have a mic and you have people listening to you. You come and stand with all kinds of misguided perspectives. And now begin to communicate truths that are limited by your own spiritual perception. 
Hallelujah. So let's take it from there. And um, we'll touch on a few things and pray. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 1. Amen and amen and amen. Are you blessed? Verse 12. We'll read from 12 to 15. Revelation chapter 1, 12 to 15. There are a few thoughts, maybe about four of them, I will share with you on the body of Christ. And then we will pray. Okay. And I turned to see the voice. This is John the beloved when he was caught in the Isle of Patmos. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw what? Seven golden candlesticks or lampstands. Next verse. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girded about the paths with a golden girdle. Let's just stop there, really. The remaining is just a description. Listen. Where was the Son of Man found? In the midst of the seven lampstands. And those seven lampstands, John himself interpreted it that the seven lampstands represent the Catholic Church. Not Roman Catholic. The word Catholic means the universal church, the ecclesia. Are we together now? God's body, the very body of Christ. This is a powerful revelation because regardless, please listen, regardless of the error and the confusion, and now I know that there's a lot of that, regardless of the scandals that break out here and there in church among men of God, regardless of the divinations and the mix of witchcraft and the prophetic, God is still in the church. When you want to find where God is on earth, the Bible says he was found in the midst of the seven candlesticks. You will never come to a point where you will not find God in the church. This is a revelation that will help you to tread spiritual pathways. Listen, in every assembly, I don't care whether the man is a herbalist or a devil, if there is one person who genuinely believes in the hand of God, for the sake of that one person, God will find a way of manifesting himself in the church. Whether or not he is received. Are we together now? Please listen. Do not carry this idea that God is, is just in some places and not in some places. No, the Bible says in the midst of the seven lampstands, are we together? You must have this understanding about the body of Christ. So that when you go for a conference and you watch the people playing games and the people trying to get money out of people, as angry as you are, there is a consolation. He is still in the midst of the seven lampstands. So you take your eyes away from all the error and the jamborees and you pay attention. If you pay attention, you will find God. This is already a deliverance for someone. Because if you are looking for a perfect church, you will not find one. You will find a man of God who is warded but lousy. While you are angry with that one, you will find the one that loves God but once in a while he touches beer when there is pressure. Are we together? And then while you are running, you find another one. Brothers and sisters, in the midst of the confusion of the church, Christ is still in the church. So you have your, your predefined, you have your idea about how service should be run. Koinonia is quite organized. If during praise and worship you decide to just fly over here, the protocol will carry you and take you out. We are a bit organized, but there's a church you go to that somebody can even be dancing and come and jump and the man of God will hold him and jump back and you now roll and enjoy. You will go to that kind of church with your cynicism because you want everywhere to be like Koinonia. And then you do not have the flexibility to understand that God is not in the church because it is perfect. God is in the church because he is the one perfecting it. Believe this and you will have a very, very open spirit about the body of Christ. There is no way I cannot preach. There is no way I can. If, tell me, um, call, well, I, I don't mention names of men of God, but please permit me to just call one. Call Sir Gurma, that guy, Lagos, about the next Gurma Raji, right? If Gurma Raji invites me for dinner, I will go. I won't do it in a secret. I will do it in the open. You will snap me and it will be on Facebook. 
I will go and eat with you. The person who cut the meat you bought from the market today is doing worse things than Guru Maharaj. What they did with that cow before you ate it, but just because you didn't see it, you now bought the meat, you didn't pray over it, you boiled the thing and ate it. Well, you see, this hypocrisy and lies in the church is why we don't find God. Listen, there is no man who is influenced outside of his will. Being in the presence of evil is not what corrupts people. Opening up to the influence of evil is what corrupts a man. This is not a justification to be unruly with your spirit. But you must be conscious of what is within you. Above and beyond what is around you. Let me tell you, Christ is in his body. Don't think one man's anger about what the church is doing. So the, the argument that, oh, there are people who wear trousers and God is not in this church. There are people who veil their hairs and don't believe in wearing trousers. They are people of the law. God is not in this church. These ones are grace people. God is there. These ones are law people. God, these ones are Old Testament. Christ is everywhere. Trust me. Trust me. I've gone to too many places and I've wondered and marveled at the presence of God that came there. So when I go for a meeting, I expect imperfection from the vessels. So it doesn't surprise me. Are we together now? I went for a meeting one day and the man of God was preaching and they were clapping and he was carried away and he did something that, Kai, a Christian should not do. You know, women of God, once you are carried away, especially when you joke and people clap, it now, you, you now digress and start saying things that don't make sense and he did something that was not nice. I said well god this is your church you are still in your holy temple we fear you but just have mercy on us and my ears was open and i was blessed i was blessed so if you go and sit down in a church where they say everybody fetch sand for instance just, ah, what am i doing here no let me tell you you can ignore the sand part and pay attention even if you don't learn any spiritual lesson you can learn diligence even if you don't learn anything, you can learn excellence. If the message is not blessing you at all, look at the backdrop. All right, this is a new color. I've not seen you. There's something to learn. Because whatever it is, Christ is in his church. Listen to what I'm telling you and you will be so mature. You will marvel and wonder at your level of spiritual maturity. God's idea is not to make the whole world koinonia. That's, that's a dream. If that's what you think we are doing, we're, I'm not one of those men of God who believes that will convert the whole world to become our church. It's a dream that God will stop by himself because that's not his idea. I think kingdom. So regardless of my personal contribution, I am also um, of the proposition that the church as a universal entity will make progress, even if it is not my unique so if somebody is healed, whether the person was healed from MFM or living faith, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is an avenue has been created for the power of God to find expression. Are we together now? God is still in the midst of his church. Please listen. Brothers and sisters, God does not use us because we are perfect people. No. Self-perfection is, is exhausting and unnecessary. Number two, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 16, verse 8. There are certain things that I want to straighten out tonight about the body of Christ so that our approach over the body of Christ will be very balanced because many men of God do not have the courage to teach this. Because of their bias, they run churches like their personal organization. Matthew 16, verse 18. This is the second point that I want to communicate. It says, And I say unto thee, listen, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. Everybody say, God will build his church. So who is the builder of the church? God never left the building of the church to Joshua Selman or any other person. He himself is the builder of the church. Imagine if God left the building of the church to me. I will first gather all the people who are my tribe. Is that not what we do? 
are you my tribe no you are not part of this building and we make it look like association of christian members of of northern i will build my church and if you allow me build it the gate of hell that means if the gate of hell is prevailing over your church you are building it because god said i will build it in such a way that it will be so fortified that the gates of hell will not prevail please listen i want you once and for all especially for those who are pastors or those who are trusting god for ministry bury this ownership mentality about ministry this is why pastors fight do you fight what is not your own if i want to touch a jimmy's child now is his child are we together now and so he will stand and defend it if i'm touching this flower you may feel bad but it's not your own personality so you have no right to challenge me the decoration department can be angry but at least not you so why do i become so personal if somebody says i don't like koinonia you take it personal because you are the geo you are the builder you will, you will pay for the bills you will manage all the crises there and you will run yourself to an early grave i learned this early in life god if you don't build your church let's be embarrassed together i am just a pipe the way you see let me tell you this is the reason why there is so much refusal to confront truth in the body of christ even when the truth has been known because everybody is conscious of his own church so we run we run ministries like business ventures i have two thousand members in my ministry and my church these are my sons these are my daughters they are everybody's at my beck and call and then you now try to spiritualize it by saying god is helping us ownership mentality as a leader you should be responsible over that which god has given to you but you see we are stewards in the kingdom if men of god knew that they are stewards they would not kill themselves i see the way a lot of pastors i mean you see somebody he didn't come to church you almost kill him i didn't see you in church why to mean you reduce the number it's because of you they 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 thought well they, they have been writing that we are 50 now you are the one who is making them think we are 48 you see that kind of mindset listen listen i'm speaking to you if you don't relinquish the the pressure that ownership brings it will kill you early that's why people fight hallelujah that's why people fight if you ever want to see expansion in anything and in ministry you must surrender everything to god you see the way we do koinonia the, the workers are aware god forbid but if i die today you only cry for seven days today's what friday i assure you by tuesday or wednesday you'll be used to it ah apostle is dead i'm dead how i mean what happened this guy even released long life what, what you are saying is irrelevant because i'm gone they will bury me take me my mother will cry all the people they will cry and everybody will be fine when they dump me. that's all i tell you and by next week koinonia continues the only thing you will miss in this ministry is my unique grace i preach enough messages to bless the body of christ but there are pastors the day they miss service everybody will know this service was a mess where are you about pastor where are you listen never have that kind of attitude over the body of christ the best of any member is only an effective member no one person equals the church the 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 recognition of this is equal to wisdom are we together i learned this early and so i let him take the glory he's the one building koinonia and for as long as i allow him to keep building it that's the reason why we do ministry pressure free there's no frowning at everybody frowning at the offering once they are dropping you are now looking you see five naira in the transparent side of the basket you are angry five naira how much is generator how much is this if you if you want to fund ministry by yourself and be responsible oh no 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 get set to kill yourself 
I'm too young. I plan to live very long. Forget this story about death I told you. I have the, co I have the confidence to say it because I plan to live long. The mysteries of life that surround me are more than any devil, bomb blast, accident, etc. That's why I can talk about it. I scare death to his face and go to bed. Because death is a spirit. It's not one of those touch not. No, 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 no. Come on. Ask it. The sun will no more give me sunlight by day. The moon will no more give me moonlight by night. Jehovah will be my everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. The light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. When Yahweh climbs up the worms of this world, He heals all the bruises inflicted by this world. Hallelujah. Listen, God is the builder of the church. And like every member in the body or the corporate body, you can allow God to build your life. Because your own body, not koinonia, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So I allow him to build me into prosperity. I allow him to build me into health. I allow him to build me into increase. I allow him by aligning to him. Every other thing is a work of grace. My own part is alignment through obedience. Are we together? Listen, I'm speaking to someone tonight. Come on to me, Jesus says all ye that are labor and are heavy laden you are putting upon yourself self-inflicted frustrations there are pastors who before a service starts they will call the department how many people are there now say kite the way it is it's like 80 81 <gasps> i was 81 today that is a convention depression for no reason And I will build my church. Papa Oyediko was sharing how that when they were dedicating Covenant University, the Lord asked him to lie down flat on the ground in front of the gate. Are we together now? Different men of God have their different skills of surrender. Papa Iya Deboe will kneel down. Once he just goes on stage, he will kneel down before everybody, which is uh, what they call that thing? Tambori. Say, look, don't be carried away that I'm among the world's hundred most influential people. I can sing and dance before God. Other people roll on the ground before God. All that they are doing is saying, Lord, let the people see that it is the finger of God, not the brain of a man. Your brain is too small to run ministry. Ministry pressure will blow it into pieces. Hand it over to the all-wise God. Listen, every time you see supernatural things in the church, don't fight it. It is the finger of God. Because most times, the reason why we doubt the fact that it is God is, we look at the individuals that God is using. The protocol people are here and they will tell you, most times when we travel for ministration, most people, did you know that over 70% of the people who have been blessed through this ministry have never seen me? They don't even know how I look. And I love it, you cannot imagine we are dropping from the airport and then we come out and then they are looking they greet victor how are you they greet mike and then they look at yerima oh yerima is quiet he looks like he's the one and then i'm there with polos and my earphone and i'm just moving and then i say how are you and i can see the disappointment we labor to borrow jeep we labor to do all of these things to carry this thing but there is this treasure in earthen vessels. Listen, when you know this, no matter how high any result you see is, you will not be afraid of it. Because you can see where the man's limitation stopped. You know from here, it's no longer Joshua Selman. This is the hand of God. Jesus said, if I by the finger of God cast out these demons, the kingdom has come to you same thing with honor we're talking with um 
while the protocol person was driving me eddie was driving me coming we we're discussing with him in the car and then i was telling him i said can you imagine how uh what was i even talking about i was talking about honor how people crave for honor in the body of christ once somebody is entering when i was coming i saw the media people chasing me with camera just snapping and i said this these are the things that kill men of god you snap your way into death unnecessary honor let me tell you something i have found out by experience that honor is a mantle if god has not given you there is nothing that will bring it to your life what someone did that brought honor you would do it and they would trivialize it but when that grace comes no matter what you do and jabez was more honorable which service did he conduct it was an anointing hallelujah and i will build my church i learned this principle of absolute surrender long ago in my life and it's one of the foundational things that's why when men of god stand and they are bragging i this and that my shoe is fifty thousand. this suit came from this and i said lord i know how the suit came it came through favor favor i'm unashamed of the favor of god oh you were smart fine you qualified after 20 years of ministry to be sitting in this position i was carried on the wings of grace i know how i got there and so i don't become foolish he is the builder and so i give him all the glory i will not say lord you are the builder then when it's time for shine i say god this is my moment just allow me to avoid me. to you be all the glory the reason why we don't give god glory in church is because we do not recognize that he is the builder the leaders know everybody knows i tell you that anybody climbs this pulpit one day to brag and make noise as though it's his strength I, I, I don't know what will happen to that person. Maybe thunder will just strike on his head and drop him dead there. Koinonia is a mystery held only by the hand of God. Only by the hand of God and not the wisdom of a man. He said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, no man, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Is God with you? And are you allowing him to build your life? Are we together? Say after me, God is building the church. That's why, let me say something. Except for very, very, um, for few exemptions, the idea of people running away from their church because they feel it's not hot enough, is not correctly kingdom because God is building his church as lukewarm as that church is one day the fire of god will fall on one quiet youth who is around one at the back of one toilet praying for three hours every day he will just pray and go back and say lord this bottom in this church i am taking the burden every day he's just praying in tongues three hours one day he will have an encounter that's what happened to apostle babalola right quietly he went to tap uh, um i don't know if it was palm wine or something i, I can't remember the story now and the fire of God fell upon him. He saw a whirlwind like that of Moses. And a voice spoke from it. He had an encounter. And then there were already a group of prophets. Who refused to endorse him in the ministry. And one day they were watching him from the window during a prayer session. And the guy healed a madman. In their presence and the Lord told them this guy. Is one of the people to carry that apostolic grace. That was the only condition. That they received him and extended a hand of fellowship for him. Brothers and sisters, please let God build your life. All this bragging, I'm beautiful, that's why it's working. You will see the limitation of beauty when it is only beauty building your life. I'm rich, that's why. I, I, I got first class, that's why. Remember last, was it last month or month before last, when we prayed for a first class student here who was jobless? How do you explain that? Please make up your mind for the body of christ and for yourself that from today you will never be embarrassed to directly acknowledge god in all your ways i'm sharing with you a principle that will bless you in all your ways acknowledge him right proverbs chapter 3 when you read from verse 5 to 6 
to seven really that's verse six in all your ways acknowledge him and there is a promise he will direct make straight your path my ministry my business my intelligence many guys are around me even them they know that i'm fine continue instead of you to use the opportunity and say lord thank you there are many ladies nobody will even say good morning to see let me tell you men can deceive you but when you deceive yourself you are really in deception everybody here we know where god brought us from everybody knows i know where god brought me from so i'm not going to allow all of the blessings from ministry get me carried away some of us will not acknowledge it by ourselves but if others try to do it in a way you know is destructive you will enjoy it it's like saying i won't buy beer with my own money but if Sam buys for me, I won't mind. You are still a drunkard. Because a drunkard is not the one who buys beer by himself. He's the one who drinks it. Whether it was given as a gift or bought with your money. An arrogant person. Right? A boastful person. The one that will face destruction from God. Is the one who always looks for an opportunity for vain glory. I'm not saying don't honor people don't acknowledge people i know you love me you respect me you honor me i love you and i honor you too however there is a limit and it is the responsibility of everybody to draw the line there are things people do for me i say no no this is too much and i will build my church if you allow me build it the gates of hell will not prevail say amen Number three, is God blessing us? Please pray in one minute before we continue and say, Lord, build my life. I've been trying to do this thing in my own strength. Please pray. Trying to enter a relationship by your own strength. You tried makeup, it didn't work. You tried with one, it didn't work. You tried buying designers, it didn't work because it doesn't work by all those things. It takes the mercy of God. Open your mouth and pray. I've tried it by my strength. I've tried succeeding. I've stretched my intellect from border to border tonight. I give it up. I give it up. Please pray. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Lord, if you do not help me, nobody can help me. If you don't take me from where I am to the place of destiny, there is no possibility outside of you. Can you pray? In all your ways, acknowledge him. Hallelujah. Please listen. Let it be a culture in your life. Every time men begin to clap, become an usher. Point them to Jesus. Hallelujah. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. You never see me say, I did this. The power of my might. I, I did this. Do you know every time we finish Koinonia, when I go back home, many times after counseling people, I just, I have one small chair. It's my little altar with God. I just get down on my knees. Sometimes when I come, especially during the miracle service, mighty things that God has done, you know, that's how I can just, sometimes I can, I can stay in that position. And that's how I pass the night. Just acknowledging him. I don't cry before people, but I cry before God. I just sit down and I see his faithfulness. When we had 25,000 likes on Facebook, exactly 25,000, I was on my knees before God. And I said, Lord, I know people with TV ministries whose Facebook page is not even up to 3,000. Is the faithfulness of God. I said, Lord, to be able to influence people, I hear that already, this is just like the second service. There are over 1,000 plus people following us on Facebook already. I mean, on um, our online radio. Right now, connected, listening to me from around the world. During my birthday last year, there were about 16 nations, 16 nations called to say happy birthday. I've not gone to those, almost all of those nations, maybe. But the faithfulness of God. 
if you learn to acknowledge God, some of you, if God gives you half of the anointing he has given me, your knee will never touch the ground again because of arrogance. The knees that used to touch the ground, this was how I used to cry in his presence in the night on concrete floor. People are sleeping and I'm crying and say, God, please, if you ever will need to use a man, I'm available. Then I could not afford suit. Now that I can afford it, that suit must rub the ground. Except it's not my own. If it tears, let it tear. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. For your glory be lifted high. Be lifted high. For your glory be lifted high in my life, be lifted high, be lifted high. For your glory, be lifted high, be lifted high. Two more times. We live you the day you hold one million of your money you you that's the day you will know you don't fear god because prosperity gives you options can you stand and look at 100 million one billion and hold it and say lord this will not take my place in god's place in my life oh god bless me for where you began to love god the day one guy said i love you by yourself you have not prayed since that day till today no need for prayer again the day someone said ah you are pretty the day they said lead one small prayer and two people fell under the anointing god never saw you again ah this is how people cheat themselves out of the realm of the spirit they cheat themselves out of the place of power i tell you this is why the body of christ may never come into unity because of this spirit of pride I did this I built the church I did this it was by my wisdom I prophesied and it happened I spoke to her and she came with triplets the Bible says a man can have nothing except it be given to him by the father this was a secret of David David knew the hand of God he will say many are they that rise up against me many are they that say where is his god he said but thou O lord you are a shield for me that i have not fallen is not a product of my strength oh i'm this i don't like ladies keep quiet and give god all the praise i'm anointed i finished three days dry Come and see what God did in the meeting. Who told you? Who told you? He does these things that men may fear him. Let me tell you something. I show you a secret that will make God foul to keep lifting you. Men may talk. They, their, talk will, they, their saliva will dry from their mouth. But you will just be rising by a mystery no human can explain. Be lifted high, be lifted high, higher and higher, Lord. Be lifted high, be lifted high, higher and higher, Lord. Be lifted high. 
this is already a message to somebody this may be the missing key behind your glory that just faded from last year you found out that it was like Ichabod there are people like that I watch preachers on TV and without a sense of cynicism I see the fading of the glory people are still celebrating but those who are in the spirit know there is nothing new in this grace it's dry money is still coming but it's dried I tell you I've had ministers that I respect so much I've had ministers that I acknowledge the dealings of God in their life speaking recent times and I was shocked how can a man touch a level of spiritual reality and not have anything else to tell the body there are people who have been etched out of the program of God because of this pride there are musicians who have left the scene of Nigerian gospel music never to come back again because right now if you don't give them 1.5 they will not come you have to talk to multiple pas they've forgotten that it was one song they didn't even write he came that day they didn't eat and they were praying and god said let me bless you and he brought one song that opened them up and from that day have you noticed that most of these people any other song they write no matter what they do it will never sell again because it was never about the song it was about the grace there are some of us here please hear me i'm speaking to you i know pastors who anything they did used to work no matter how small it was like a charm they can organize a program in 24 hours but right now whether you put balloon whether you fly around with plane nothing happens because it about the glory has departed i tell you something the sin of pride is worse is worse than the sin of drunkenness and all of these other things when God will lift a man and you now stand and forget the God of your salvation I spoke to a, a man of God one day I used to know that man very interesting then God had not done anything much in his life but I spoke to him recently and his arrogance oozed out like an odor. I could literally smell it with my physical nose. I was talking to him on the phone. There are pastors who, until you now have a seat, they forgot how God took them. You want to see Joshua Selman stand here with your 50,000 or your 100,000? Not that God led you to honor, not that they challenged you in church to sow. They now stand. As you are dropping it in the basket, then you see the man of God. Ah, quarter for me to do that. May God take my life. For what? Be lifted high. Be lifted high. For your glory, be lifted high. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Please sit down. We have to hurry up. I already sense the presence of God. Let's hurry up. Number three. The third thing that we need to understand. Listen. For the body of Christ to attain the unity of faith is to separate between doctrines and personal dealings with the spirit. Please listen. What I'm telling you tonight is very deep. Pay attention. There is a difference. Listen between your personal path of spiritual progress as a marked by god on the strength of what he's making you become are we together now we all start our journey into the things of the spirit together but as we proceed the election of grace diverges men into different trajectories in the spirit are we together now and so if both of us start together and you are called into the prophetic ministry I'm called into the apostolic ministry. You are called into business. Somewhere along the line, there will be a divergence. The same way students start course, science, whether engineering, medicine, you do the same thing. Are we together? As you progress, what happens? You now begin to move to different programs that are custom built to produce that thought, that knowledge in you. Now, the trouble is this. Most people especially preachers have not been able to draw the line 
between their personal dealings with God and some of the ordinances and the covenants that they are compelled to make to strengthen their personal work with God so that they can be effective in dispensing the dimension of God committed to them. They, they do not draw that line. And everything, their personal dealing in the spirit, they ship it to the altar and teach it as a doctrine. Are we together now? Listen. Paul said, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Are we together now? Did you know that God can come, my dear? God can look at this lady and in his personal dealing with her, because she's on her way to become the wife of a man of God and a man of influence. Are we together now? God can tell her, my personal dealing with you, you are not going to wear trousers. Are we together now? That is not about wrong or right. You are occupying a position where you will be a mother to many. And I need you to be as modest as possible so that you can give the clearest picture of a virtuous woman. That is a personalized dealing. But by the time you now ship your personal experience and use it as a template to define virtue, you bring error in the body of Christ. Are we together now? There are personal things God can give a man. Are we together now? Stringent rules that God has given people. It has nothing to do with old and new covenant. It is your personal work with God. God can be so meticulous as to define for you the kind of clothes to wear because of an assignment. God can be so meticulous to define to you the kind of, the number of children to have. God can say because of the enormity of this assignment, you cannot have more than two children. If you like, have eight. But I, my recommendation for efficiency is two. It's left for you to sacrifice your personal ambition of wanting ten children. To say, Lord, for your glory. If you are lonely after two, you buy a puppy. But anything outside that, you position yourself. Are we together? God can say, because of where I'm lifting you, you cannot have three cars at any given point. People who sow 20 cars, find the best three and give the rest out. And people, they don't know these are ordinances that control power in the spirit. It's not something, there are things that God has given me, like personal rules. It's in the Bible, Samson was given a code. They said, Samson, the secret of your anointing is tied to your hair. You are a Nazarene, separate unto God. Let no razor touch your head. You can shave, but not bow. And Delilah came. He tried to do every kind of thing, and she went to his hair. Bab the hair and bab the glory away from his life until he died. Are we together now? Listen, most when I see the way many ministers are careless, I'm surprised because you see, increase in ministry can make you forget the precepts and the ordinances of God that were given to you. There are agreements that I had with God. I've done all kinds of crazy things. There was a time the Lord gave me an instruction. I put hundred, like one, one thousand, like hundred thousand on the ground. And the Lord said, I should pray as I'm matching it. That's why I kept matching it. I was praying in tongues for hours, declaring that finances will never have dominion over me. Will I tell you to do it? It is a personalized dealing. Are we together now? Please listen. This is giving us maturity. Separate between the ordinances of God given to you in the secret place. For the purpose of efficiency and doctrines that are established by the integrity of the world. They may not be wrong. But God gave you that because of the capacity he has also given you. Somebody like Papa Adeboe. His covenant with God. Was that every time Somebody before like you worship God, Papa he would go down Adeboe. on his knees. His covenant are we together now? Whether in London, before Obama, before anybody, he will do this. Are we together? Are we together now? Whether in London, there are people because of their covenant with God, they will never own more than two personal houses. They will make many rich, but they themselves are limited. 
for many years many years i wanted to buy a car god stopped me i don't know how many times there are times i've smiled thinking i just went to god oh god i like this no way will i stop you from buying a car if you want to follow my own path for you god didn't direct you and it took <laughs> what is your dealing with god there is no man of the secret place who will not eventually have personalized dealings with God where unique ordinances will be given to you from God. Hmm. It was William Branham that was given a sign by the Lord that every time his right hand begins to shake, the angel of the Lord that accompanies his ministry is in the place. And he will stand for hours and people are watching him and he says he's waiting for the arrival of the angel. And people are angry, which angel we've been here? And then his hands begin to shake and he says the angel is here and you begin to see dramatic things you try it you don't know whether it's demonic or you see how spirits get into people because you now begin to see yours and say ah william branham whereas he's a spirit god is warning you the atmosphere of god's glory is causing a spirit to react instead of you to cry for help you are there rejoicing that you are growing listen it is costly and dangerous to take your personal spiritual presence and bring it as a sign just like the example i shared did you know that there are ladies that god will give them rules no heavy makeup aside from powder and just something does it stop there he may not necessarily fight it but what he's saying because of what i am making you become can you sacrifice this for me Are we together listen if you love the lord there is nothing he will make as a demand from you that will be too much to give him hallelujah it is lack of this separation between personal dealings i've done all kinds of crazy things with god but i cannot bring it as a doctrine i i stopped sharing my experiences the only experience that most people have had is my encounter with jesus there are many more but i will not share it because these are personal dealings and if you are not careful when you begin to share it it will make people to deviate from having confidence in the knowing the word to begin to search for encounters and when the devil sees your appetite for sight in the spirit is the exact raw material he needs to deceive you one day you will see something that will not be of god hallelujah so many altars today many constitutions of churches have the personal geos encounter as the rule for the church if geo does not eat salt because god suspected that he may have high blood pressure and god before that time you see that just a simple rule now he will now add it if you eat salt in that church you are anti what god is doing that's wrong that's a personal dealing there are people read the bible because of certain kinds of anointings they were forced to be vegetarians so that they can host certain kinds of the anointing but you don't stop somebody from eating jesus for instance never ate meat he only ate fish cereals it's in the bible you never see a record where jesus ate meat who told Paul kill and eat? Answer me. Who told when when remember those unclean animals? Pig everything when it came down. Ah, Peter said, like Jesus, me too. And Jesus, ah, I had to do you are not going to the cross. I know what I was doing. He said, kill and eat. He didn't say just kill and look at it. Kill and eat. Listen, you can see two people. They will do the same thing god will keep quiet over somebody but for the other person god will say let's go back to the secret place i are saying god me again everybody is praying for one one hour god is letting them you pray for four hours god is saying you are not being serious and you are like god what is this watch this you don't compare your work with god with what is happening to the other person there is a template air marked for you based on what god is doing in you and based on where god is taking you to separate doctrines a good pastor 
will know how to teach people the truth void you may at times initiate your personal experiences to buttress on some point but the message cannot be hinged upon your personal experiences your personal experiences are too mysterious and haphazard it will take only you to understand them when you share it with people it will lead them into confusion there was a time in my life for instance where the lord asked me not to read my bible for one week you see that kind of strange thing imagine teaching you now you say thank god i always knew that this my not having appetite to read the bible is not backsliding i've been looking for an excuse even apostle don't say that to us i'm even saying it now warning you it was because god i was in a season of my life where god was teaching me certain things are we together now and god was teaching me that it is more profitable for me to receive the word than just to read it and the lord began to tell me that i am ever learning then but not coming to the knowledge of the truth i was obsessed with rema i would sit down with dick's bible and eat it cover to cover greek words check everything just look at it and i knew that something was wrong and the lord began to speak to me it's not just about dick's bible and strong concordance do you believe the little i have given you because faithfulness is the key to increase not just careless knowledge and the lord began to teach me that there are pastors that i'm allowing them to glean along certain paradigms in the spirit but this is unnecessary for your kind of ministry so you must stay with me to teach you the diet combination that will produce that apostolic grace in your life and so because of that it was an experiment for seven days but i cannot share that experience and use it as a doctrine hallelujah is god blessing you how many people have we confused as pastors with our personal experience because the man of god wants two children like i said anybody that has three four you are eyeing the person in your church five you are looking with anger six you are looking with rebellion why put people under pressure just because there are certain people because of their call they may not marry I hope you know oh yes men and women alike because of the nature at least we saw it with apostle paul because of the nature and the demands i always imagine if paul had a wife he would have been as good as not marrying because the number of times she will see him in her lifetime is countable prison today ephesus today diana will influence somebody to go and you know all kinds of things so god knows why he just said look paul I know I will compensate you when you come to heaven, but for now, forget about the issue of women and pay attention. So if you are not married, does that mean you pressure people and every time somebody says, I want to get married, you there are people like that. Any area that is not a major area of dealing in the spirit, they don't pay attention to people when they are having those issues. They don't deal with them in that area. personalized dealings God can give you dealings food clothes the way to communicate certain things to do and not do it's not just the cause of the law it is his unique dealing for you because he has studied your vulnerability and your strength and he has seen that it's only in this kind of atmosphere like a buffer he creates for you so that you are safe and if you walk within the jurisdiction of his description i'm telling you you will never fall praise the lord let's take the last point and then we'll pray is god blessing us today hmm. romans chapter 12 from verse 3 we'll read the a part and establish the last point and then we'll pray thank you jesus romans 12 verse 3 for i say through the grace given to me to every man listen that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think right but to think soberly according as god has dealt to every man the measure of faith listen 
the bible says there is a way a man can have a perception of himself that is correct but there is a way a man a church can have a perception of himself herself to a point that the bible calls it more highly that means you have crossed the boundary the acceptable level the last point this one has troubled me personally the inability closely related to the point i just shared the inability to separate between thus saith the lord and our human opinions please write it down the inability for ministries pastors to separate between thus saith the lord a prophetic word coming from god and the sincere opinion of a man a combination of his exposure his intelligence please look up there are many churches today that even if the man of god coughs people say yes lord because the man has created an atmosphere i'm not laughing listen please we are, we are going to pray now there are men of god who have created a picture of ministry that everything that comes from them is of god are we together we do not know that the holy spirit is not a fool there are many times paul will speak and say i speak as a man this is my opinion my frank intellectual analysis on this issue because you see we we have transferred this inferiority that came from the continent of africa into our lives and we feel that the only way to respect us is when um we give people an idea that everything that comes out of the man of the the words of the man of god came directly from god what has this led in the body people refusing to marry because a man could not separate his opinion i can look at a lady come mama i can look at mama now are we together and see a very beautiful lady and say ah mama this lady is a nice lady oh if you have been praying i think this is this lady is worth praying about that's a human opinion he's saying amen I'm busy using him as an example and you are saying amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh yes, ah. He knows what he's scared in Koinonia to receive. Are we together now? So I am, listen, listen. I'm telling him sincerely, oh look at this lady. We have all watched her in Koinonia. She loves God. She's a serious lady. She's serious. If God is sending you to a ministry, this is the kind of person to be a pastor's wife. Not by any vision, by intelligence and sight and logical conclusion based on the principles of the word of God you know a bad woman when you see you don't need a dream you see all the attributes you know an irresponsible man when you see him you don't need any angel to appear and say this guy is not an he's not he doesn't like the things of God you are unequally yoked what you love is what he hates the more you are growing the more he's angry with your spiritual growth is that a good man what prayer do you need about it you pack your load and leave god gave us wisdom he said wisdom is profitable to direct so back to my example i can now tell mama but if because of my arrogance i now say mama that's your wife wife that's that's your that's your husband are we together now let me tell you what i've done to both of them i have tied them in an unholy i have put a stronghold upon their minds are we together now whereas this guy may be looking at another lady his heart is somewhere he has even started the process laying the foundation and all of this and now i'm coming to scatter the whole building because of a supposed vision another thing is seeing somebody and tell him i'm looking at you and i um go and start trailer business this guy is saying god is sending me to oil and gas he say trailer and because he respects me this guy for 10 years is trying to buy one truck are we together now listen men of god have destroyed the hopes the dreams the lives of people if 
you need money in your church and a man says i want to build i've gathered six million and you want to say so don't say god is demanding your isaac i'm telling you now my polite proposal is better than an robber's gun think about it that's not prophecy that's a threat you are threatening the man to withdraw his six million and deposit it otherwise armed robbers will come and truly if armed robbers come one day you say ah this man is a man of god no he's not a man of god that's not the reason why armed robbers came listen every pastor and man of god here listen we owe god accountability you know years ago i didn't used to know the if the effect of my words on people i used to think when i just speak to people carelessly it won't mean anything to them but as i kept growing in leadership i got to learn that the words of a leader is like the words of a father it makes impact you can look at a lady right now and say i'm proud of you just that little step to you is no big deal but that will be the basis of our seriousness in the spirit ah, ah. joshua Selman said he's proud of me ah out of everybody in koinonia because to you it's no big deal because you are used to being celebrated to someone who has never received a comment from somebody the same way you look at somebody and say you're a bad girl you were joking and the lady is crying for one week oh god i repent wrong words we have not separated thus saith the lord from our sincere human opinion there are times people have met me over issues and i've told them honestly God has not told me anything about this issue. However, let's look at it from the Bible. Okay, this is what you are doing. No, the Bible prohibits this. Try this, take it this way. And then sometimes in the midst of it, God will speak expressly. And I'll say, this is the word of the Lord to you. And when I think what I said was of God, if I later discover that at my level of growth or for whatever reason, I didn't hear well. I will not have the embarrassment to say sorry i think we should pray about this thing again that day i thought it was god that said you should buy a bicycle but right now i found out that god has no business with you buying any bicycle let's pray do you have the courage brothers and sisters to separate between the word of god spoken to you to people or to yourself and your sincere human opinion please sit down the body of christ has been destroyed because of this a man makes a mistake simply acknowledge it was a mistake you say are you joking even my mistakes are pro no 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 no. that dimension now is not of god once you get to that point is insecurity spiritualized hallelujah because you see in africa we have a lot of respect for the words of men of god and please listen pastors heads of departments and maybe all the people in our community online don't be under pressure to speak to people if god has not said anything it does not mean you are not anointed hallelujah so we have all kinds of people confused right now how many people have made mistakes in their marriage because it was a man of god that said so you must marry so 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 and so person now he married the lady and he doesn't know what to do with her and they are all angry and they are confused and the man of god is there i know men of god who have looked at people and say relocate you shouldn't be doing anything in nigeria and sincerely he just perceived in his spirit that this guy should be abroad he now said go to kenya the guy is living like a a fugitive in kenya whereas he was living with authority he sold his house sold everything and left Could it be that there are people seated here right now and is the supposed word from a man of God that has kept you limited? You wanted to do business and the man said you don't have any, any business doing any business. Right? And now you've sat down because you thought that, oh, my own is just ministry that is coming. And you are getting poor, you are getting broke. The day you went to go and meet... Uh, Maybe the lady's parents for introduction they say what are you doing you say according to what my pastor told me he said i should not worry it would be like the twinkling of an eye and the father looks at you and he say you have the courage to come
come and enter my gate the next time you come i will call police and they will catch you and you go back disappointed oh god did you not speak to me i refuse to be a fool i refuse to let the pursuit of god look like stupidity whenever there is no direct word from the lord i work with the principles of the word how many men of god were doing well in ministry until a prophet or an apostle somewhere in a meeting prophesied to them i know pastors who have no business having churches they are not supposed to open churches but they went and met a man of god now the man may not be wrong but he spoke a word he said i'm looking at you and i see 17 branches god is giving you speed the guy started dying the money that god allocated for the program he now started spreading 17 branches around and now he's killing him weekly budget 2.5 whereas his annual money that he's receiving from the small members is 500,000. where is he going to get the other money from so he starts lying he starts creating a prophecy session drop your 30,000 i speak to you that's what has led men of god into all of these things because of pressure separate between the word of the lord directly see and a sincere communication of the truths of the kingdom there are times i prepare a message not that god told me necessarily i sat down as a leader i understand how to build people i know that if you have a ministry with people you must build them in the area of spiritual growth build them in character build them in finances family life leadership interpersonal skills these are things that are we, we are human beings god does not need to tell me that the wisdom of the world has taught me that you must build people holistically there are times i come on stage here and god completely from everything i've planned that does not mean he did not give the inspiration but at this current time this is what he wants to be said and i'm unashamed i drop it there are times i come here and i tell you this is what the lord spoke to me this word came from god this is what he wants us to do it is not unspiritual to acknowledge your humanity listen to my message why revivals die the humanity of men people have sent me names dio uh shegu who and who they say apostle who do you think among these three guys i said no 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 god has not told me anything i don't even want to start deceiving you but there are some of us here especially some of us who are just starting in ministry you are under pressure when you get that kind of text you just laugh and do tinini tanana and then it just lands on dial and you send back say dial i hear dial and now the lady and maybe dial is not even born again you now pin this lady with this this unspiritual brother for many years and she cannot move forward i deliver anyone here who has been under the influence of a wrong prophetic word that has tied you down and has refused you from moving forward in the name of the lord jesus christ a man of god who is limited in scope sees somebody who wants to do international business and he says no this is not of god he's using his limitation about his poor understanding on financial intelligence and destroying the passion of another person to expand you don't do that and then the worst part is when we start saying it's from god so right now brothers let me just buttress on this point but brothers cannot come and meet a lady you can't come and meet a sincere lady and just tell her oh you love god you have to start saying look it was by 241 between 241 or 242 uh, sorry i was dragging you Abby. around 241 or 242 i was just strolling around somewhere and i saw what looked like a vision i said lord is this you and he was silent now the lady is standing and wondering what's this guy saying now of course she knows where you are going to and he says look on a very good day me I, i'm just minding my business but how can I be negligent of this heavenly call now that I've seen this call? And now the lady wants to say no, but she has been threatened by what? A vision. God said, you are my wife. I'm not saying, go and think about it. What is the answer? The lady said, well, it's too early. I don't know you. Is this what we are saying? Me too. Do I know the vision? I, I saw it. 
As funny as what I'm saying is, this is the template, the only way many brothers in many churches know how to ask a lady. They just come and say, what did, are you still wasting my time or I plan to marry based on what God told me. He showed me July. Are you doing this thing or not? Let's just know. And it keeps backfiring again and again and again. Because you see, the laws of the spirit are unemotional. This again is also the reason why people are confused. And let me just touch on this and then we'll pray. Today, you go to bed and you see Amaka. Bless you, darling. Tomorrow, as soon as you wake up, you see Shalhoma. You are washing your face and you saw her face. I say, I reject it. You saw it again. Are we together now? Next week, you now see Martha. And then the individual, is she sincere? Yes. Is she sincere? Yes. But because you have tied your, your paradigm, are we together now, to only visions, you are confused. You saw seven sisters in one week. You are not a bad brother, but you are seriously confused. You can see me come matter. You can see me wearing suit and matter dressed like this. It can mean intimacy, not marriage. You have to go back to God to find out what he's saying. That you saw what looked like suit does not mean it's marriage. A ring can be a symbol of authority, not a vow to say I do. You see, you, 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 you come down and then be careful some of these books. Please, um, um, it's my job and my duty to address these things. Although that's really not what I'm talking about. But since it has come, let's just let it land. There are books many of us have read. Written by sincere people who have been confused. That's why a man can be married. And now be looking at a lady and then another prophet to come and say well i don't know how to tell you this thing but this lady you have married although you are 10 years in marriage she's the reason why your ministry is not moving forward i stand as a prophet of god to declare to you is there a lady called jane in koinonia he said yes yes ma'am I'm, I'm. i said leave your wife go to jane now the man will not leave her in one day but automatically he was not eating her food again and then he now calls jane 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 how now how was service today then he say fine daddy he said why must you call me daddy <laughs> it has it has started i will talk oh, my name is joshua selman <laughs> and the wife is surprised He's prayed. He has suddenly developed an unusual passion for prayer in the night. And you go to the parlor and you see he's, he's secretly calling. Jane, what does it take to do your wedding sharp sharp? And he's planning on leaving his wife because somebody said, first say the Lord. And in the church we are so unspiritual that anybody just stands and because he tells you something that is true, then he now uses it to confuse you. Please listen to me anyone here who has left his financial pursuit because a man of god spoke to you and said you don't need it go back and carry those notebooks and start reading it otherwise you would you would chew your hands in the future to come the bible says a lazy man will not eat it has nothing to do with with vision are we together now if you graduate and you want to become a millionaire from you've nothing is coming in your hands now get a job and start from there do you need a vision there are two ways God directs men. He can say start and he can say stop. So if he doesn't say anything, start. I need to address this. Thus say the Lord has destroyed a lot of people. So we have gotten into all kinds of things. Thank you, my dear. I went to pray for a woman some years ago. God is my witness. I saw over 21 anointing oils. And this 21 anointing oils was from different men of God and different prophets. 21. None of them was free. By the way, not one was free. She went to one woman, one prophetess. I, I was told that if you go to the woman's place, now I'm not criticizing. Maybe the woman is listening to the message. Hallelujah. 
and then the woman said you have to camp in her hostel you must buy her water you must eat only from her restaurant who does not know that's business skill no 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 don't threaten me with spirituality who does not know if i have a ministry wouldn't i want you to eat from my restaurant it's a very sincere desire to generate revenue don't spiritualize it and make it look like if you eat my rice there's there's the way that rice this is is it not uncle bears or whatever they brought it they, they cook that rice you spiritualize it and threaten people there are members who cannot go and buy food in certain places because some men of God have supposedly put an embargo. Haba. You want to take your children to a good school. But the man of God has said, if it's not my school, except you are not under this ministry and you are threatened, I set you free. I deliver you from that nonsense this night in the name of Jesus Christ. One of the benefits of spiritual growth is freedom. Marry me or you die. You say, oh, no problem. I'm already dead. You don't threaten me. I marry because of love, not force. If you are in a hurry, go and find somebody and go and meet the parents. We give this terrible idea about God and it is the prophetic and apostolic ministry that has brought this bad idea about God. Everything that a man wants, he uses prophecy to make it happen. The Lord is speaking to me right now. Everybody package 10, 10,000. Come and drop it. Rub my shoes with it. It's a sign of speed. The speed I've experienced in two years of ministry. Carry that seed. Mr. Man, you need money. No problem. God designed a system to honor you. Don't tell lies and threaten the people. For when God speaks, there is grace for performance. There are many angry people. You see them remove the envelope and they are just walking to the man of God with anger. They get there and they just kneel down and just drop the tear and say, pray for me. There are many members are angry and I foresee a revolt if we don't change. Because as TV ministry is exposing people right now, a day will come, Koinonia is going on air and more people will hear these truths. And when it happens, people will say, pastor, my money. Because all that long story you have been threatening me i will say it without any fear or favor i'm a man of god there is a way i can come to you right now and tell you i am hungry please give me food and you will bless me but when i come and say the lord instructs even when god commanded elijah he didn't go to one and say god has said it did you hear bring food he said madam bring food for me Thus saith the Lord. People have mortgaged their vehicles. They carried their jeeps and gave a man of God. Because he said, God said, bring it. God is not an idiot. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times that those kinds of instructions will come. I can't tell you how many times God has made a demand of my resources, demand of any and everything. However, anything that is not done by love brothers and sisters is sin don't let any man threaten you to marry him in the name of prophecy don't let any man threaten you the worst one is becoming part of a church because of prophecy so like all these guys now serving the lord the day now they are ready to go and start their ministries or do something the man of god now stands and says if any of you leaves this assembly except i'm not a man of god there is a curse upon you nonsense there's no such thing as that except if they believe it they'll go and die as a result of lack of carelessness and preparation not because of insecurity expressed in a threat are we together now there are so many pastors they can't marry they can't get a job they can't move because they are serving a self-centered man of god who is enjoying their ministry and will never allow them to move the moment they want to move you say the course remember and they now stay back i deliver you tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ Any man deceive you. listen our god is a good god our god is not a wicked god who comes out to just kill people and destroy their lives men kill themselves 
because of their violation of kingdom principles we are going to pray Ephesians chapter 4 says it is for this reason he gave unto some when you read from verse 12 apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors teachers he says for the edification the maturing of the saints that's what is happening to you I'm not teaching you this listen please look up to be judgmental and imbalanced because some of you in your various churches whether here or at home you have men of God that do some of these things the goal is not to go back with the spirit of arrogance and rebellion but the goal is to have a settled confidence immovable and unshakable to separate between thus saith the Lord and anything that is a lie hallelujah but I know whom I have believed he says and I am persuaded that he is able so number one I spoke about the fact that God is always in the church I'm doing a review everyone say God is always in the church yes regardless of the imperfections God is always in the church when you go to church look for God don't look for doctrines when you go to church look for God don't look for dress code when you go to church look for God not a man's ability to speak good English or otherwise not a man's ability to gather degrees and then you use that to mean oh this guy knows what he's saying no when you go to church don't go around looking for mundane things go to church looking for the one who is in the middle of the lampstands bypass the mistakes bypass the arrogance bypass the flesh and find God if you search for him you will find him in every church because he's there for the sake of two or three who are gathered in his name the rest may be gathered in another name but when two or three are gathered in his name what did he say will happen he said there I am not by proxy in their midst number two God is the builder of the church and by extension the builder of your life always know that number three separate between your personalized dealings with God and the doctrines that God commits unto you your personal dealings with God may require you following some strict pathways that are for your personal consumption and not for the church not for members generally separate it feed the people with the truth as committed to you unto them and separate between your personal dealings and what God is telling them number four separate between thus saith the Lord and your human opinions your human opinion can be spiritual and it can also be equivalent to the word of God but have the unashamedness to admit before people especially those who honor you and esteem you to be so anointed have the meekness to tell them this is my perspective on this issue and when God speaks have the unreserved boldness to say this was from God if I perish let me perish please rise up on your feet hallelujah we are going to pray I'd like you to please participate in the prayer I thought I would have time to round off with Psalm 133 a mystery God showed me about the blessing released when the corporate body comes but our time is up but I think we've had enough listen to me Jesus said look up everybody and ye shall know the truth he says and the truth shall make you free he says therefore if the son of man sets you free you are free
Many of us have been saved, but we are not free because of these things. And we are in our way contributing to destroying the body of Christ with these points that I've shared. Pride. Claiming everything that is done is from you. Or criticizing ministries. You call a ministry and say, this ministry, they are not anointed. They don't even have rema. There's no revelation in this ministry. There are books God wants you to read. And you feel I've left this man far. Papa Ia Deboe comes for a crusade. And you cannot attend. Because you think my level of revelation is far exceeding this thing. This man is going to be teaching us as if we are in nursery school. When you search for God, you will find him in every church. Take my word for it. When you search for God, the God that I serve, he's not just in your church. He's not just in Koinonia. When you search for him, you will find him. He was found in prisons. He was found in different places in the Bible. I choose to seek God, not the perfection of men. I choose to seek God, not the dexterity of ministries. I choose to seek God. When I go for a, me a meeting, I ignore the mistakes of the man of God. I ignore the limitations. I see his disalignments here and there, but I sustain a spirit of maturity. Did you know, brothers and sisters, and I say this with all humility, we are praying. I've had the privilege to be called by different people and they have spoken to me about men of God and their limitations. I think I was sharing with you, was it some weeks ago? One of them was one very great man of God and you know some people called me to say certain things that I cannot even begin to say here and they were true, they were not a lie. So when they said all these things to me I had started seeing these signs personally but then when it, it, it personally broke me the lady had to do it in secrecy because this is I mean if you count the men of God in this country maybe the first 10 he will, he will be among them repeatedly but I told them something I said listen I'm not justifying the things the man of God is doing but I can tell you authoritatively, he's still a man of God. Whether you choose to disbelieve him or not, I will build my church. If he refuses to align in the secret place and amend for those imperfections, he has God alone to face. But as far as the building of the church is concerned, Christ alone must be glorified. Do not let the imperfections of churches and men of God stop you from seeing God and receiving there are men of God who are very arrogant but I listen to them passionately because my focus is not their arrogance they should finish their boasting and then let me hear what God has to say and I know they carry something that I need so I ignore all of those things there are men of God who are very careless I ignore their carelessness and I pay attention there are men of God who are very vulnerable when you look at them, you don't know what they can do. But I ignore those things and I pay attention. There are men of God who you know are standing very fine between the bridge of witchcraft and ministry. I ignore all of those things. I have had a passion to find God. That's why I find him everywhere. It doesn't matter where I look. I find him. You stop seeking for him and started seeking for perfection. In a man of God, in koinonia, in your ministry. You, search, you stop searching for him and you started seeking for perfection in every book. You started seeking for which Greek word is correct or wrong. And it stops blessing you. Oh, 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 oh. Number one, 
I like you to pray and say, Lord, help me that everywhere I go in the body of Christ, let me search for Jesus, not perfection. Lift your voice and pray. A seeker of Jesus, not perfection. A seeker of Jesus. Man may be imperfect. Man may not have the excellence you are looking for. They may not have the organization you are looking for. But can you find Jesus in your church? Can you find Jesus in your pastor? Can you find Jesus in the church in Zaria? Can you find Jesus in the church in the north? Can you find Jesus in the church in Nigeria? Yes, I know there are manipulations. Yes, I know there are wrong prophecies. I know that there are manifestations here and there of witchcraft. I know there are people whose God is their belly. But can you find Jesus in the church? Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I take away that attitude of cynicism. I take away that attitude of resentment. I take away that attitude of self-centeredness. I search for Jesus in every church. I search for Jesus in the Catholic Church. I search for Jesus in MFM, in living faith, in deeper life. I search for Jesus. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, I relinquish dependence on the flesh and all the things that you have accomplished through me. I lift my eyes from today on you alone and I will never lean on my own understanding. Lift your voice and pray. Father, I repent for making men look at me instead of you. I repent for drawing the attention of men to myself instead of you. Are we praying? Pray. Lord, I've not used my beauty to direct men to the king. I've not used my prosperity to direct men to the king. I have a passion for being celebrated to a default, to a point where I don't care if my king is exalted or not. Lift your voice and pray. Let pride die in my life. Let fame glory die in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll combine the third and fourth point and pray together. We're going to pray and say, Lord, I pray that all those who believe in your word upon my mouth will not be misled by my inability to separate between what you are saying and what I'm suggesting to them. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, in any way I've confused people, bring direction to them. Are we praying in Koinonia? Lord, I pray for the millions that submit to the grace of God upon my life and believe in the word of God upon my mouth. May I never mislead them as a result of my ego. Oh, may I not say God is saying when you are not speaking. May I have the humility to separate between my personal suggestions and the word of the Lord. I receive grace not to put men in bondage. I receive grace not to yoke men. I receive grace to separate my personal dealings from that which you want to tell the body. I 
hallelujah hallelujah the last prayer point we're going to pray sorry there's no time one of the blessings of the body of christ is the ability to contact the corporate anointing listen let me tell you something it's called the power of a corporate life let me just share this mystery give me one minute listen if there is a dimension that i need to step into a new level of prosperity or grace but because of my personal dealings with god i have not yet learned how to align the holy spirit so that i can make that possibility at work in life i can take advantage of a jimmy's deadness and enter that dimension are we together now? the reason why when one person opens it to the body everybody starts entering it's called power of a corporate life there yeah. the oil comes the head of aaron but does not stop there any boat connected to that spiritual tribe that family they become partakers of that grace so all it takes but that's the beauty everybody does not have to open every door by themselves so you call the door you have opened from your secret place i come the door i've opened from my secret place in worship there is a meaning i leave that meeting with a grave i never would have anything some of you by watching the worship team something was calling your music ministry you had the grace but you didn't have the ability to write songs but now somebody the grace to write songs started singing and that spirit fell upon you right now there are people who were not songwriters but because they were able to tap into the grace are we together now there are people that revelation and that grace the spirit of prayer and supplication but you were able to when you keep for colonia and then you started attending the meetings and then you went to the prayer but something happened to you you contacted the spirit of prayer application now you can run eight hours you're stretching in the spirit seven hours and it's like you just detaching it there is a grace that makes it happen are we together you can begin to from in the night and pray till 12 in the afternoon and it does not tell because the power of the corporate anointing has come up there are people who do not have the appetite for excellence they do not even have the recognition of it but once you come to a mystery all of a sudden as a pastor you start noticing and in koinonia nobody said it's now time for offering and then people clap and you say wow there can be a way you are not just seeing there is a spirit behind it and that spirit comes upon you and all of a sudden you find out that it begins to affect the area of your life the day you organize a meeting you will see yourself reproducing koinonia that's that you will know how much you have carried the grace there are some of you here you are music ministers the day you go to minister somewhere you will be shocked you will think you are in koinonia all of a sudden you will see graces that's what happened to a lot of pastors some of them just visited they just came and sat down i didn't even prophesy to them they just got up and went back to their meetings and they were surprised listen let me tell you the shocking thing when they went to their when they came for koinonia their keyboard did not follow them are we together their leaders did not follow them but because of the anointing they came with all their leaders started behaving the way the leaders behave in that ministry is an anointing it's called the power of a corporate life you enter into realms that your personal alignment would not have afforded you to enter on the strength of unity i like us to pray tonight as i just pray for us quickly i like you to say lord every grace that i need but my personal alignment has not been able to bring me into and it's available in this house i open up my spirit to receive it lift your voice and pray 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 you are a prayer warrior but you are poor it means there is a grace there is a grace that is yet to come upon your life you are anointed but there are no members there is a grace that you need you are prosperous but you don't pray there is a grace that you need you are anointed but there's no speed in your life oh pray come on what grace is lacking in my life and is available what grace is lacking in my life pray we're rounding up
Aleluya Aleluya I'll just leave the impartation for next week Please don't miss next week's meeting Before I come up We're going to have a session Like a panel Four people We're going to be discussing very serious matters of the kingdom A panel Four people Having some deep questions about our work with the spirit dimensions we touch on four areas spiritual growth finances family life and leadership we're going to touch on these four areas please don't miss it hallelujah we're going to sit down and have people discuss epochal dimensions this is not teaching this is not teaching we're going to give people an opportunity for god to just correct things and after that our minister if i'm to do an impartation now our time will go however please i want you to pray and say father whatever is not working in my life but i have seen another person in koinonia working in it that grace i open up that it must come upon my life right now please pray there are prayer warriors in this place there are millionaires in this place there are exceptional leaders in this place. There are men and women of uncommon influence. Hear me, brothers and sisters. There is a variety of spiritual graces from different ministries, different encounters, different perspectives, different spiritual paradigms. It takes all, it takes openness. So the assignment for you is in preparation for Friday. Write down, listen, write down all the areas of your life where you have seen the grace of God work. Take note of it. But write down the areas of your life. Listen, please. Write down the areas of your life where you have not seen the notable grace of God working. Come with that list. We are going to pray on it on Friday. I'm not interested in the one that is working. Are we together? That's why you think certain men of God are fake. Because they are the only ones carrying certain levels of graces. And it's not supposed to be. If you are a prayer warrior and you are broke, it's because there is a grace you have not received. Are we together? If you are a business person who does not pray, there is a grace you have ignored. So the body of Christ gives us an opportunity to step into anointings brothers and sisters you will never prosper in an area where the grace is not available it's not an issue of trying please write it down oh in my finances i'm a millionaire this is already done in my prayer life god is helping me i'm doing very well but in my work life uh -uh, i think there's a problem in the area of character i think something is wrong or i i do well but everything I do does not work. I try to call people into anything and they don't come. There is a grace for influence that you don't have. Write it down. With your heart open, we are going to flog it out here on Friday. Open the heavens and let there be transference of graces. Transference. And you will go out. There were things in my life years ago were not in my life. I know they were not in my life. And I knew the day they came. There are things right now they are not yet in my life. And I'm pursuing them with every, every openness of heart and spirit. And I know they will come and they will land in my life. Father, I pray. Tonight you have challenged us over the body of Christ. To the end that we come to the unity of faith. I'm praying for everyone under the sound of my voice. Lord, bring them to strange levels of graces. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are doing mighty things in Koinonia in this season, and Lord, I thank you for it. I'm praying, oh God, that you will not withhold your hand. Do mighty things, mighty things, mighty things in the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please keep standing. There are people here. Please, when I'm making the altar call, I want to plead with us. 
no movement. Let us always honor those who need to come and give their lives to Christ. Hallelujah. And so, time for altar call. We should have minimal distractions so that we give the people an opportunity to be born again, to be saved. Listen, the foundation of all these things we are talking about, if you are not in Christ, you are not part of the body of Christ. Are we together? Every part of the body has a similarity. When you see a growth, look not as part of the body, the doctors remove it. Are we together now? If you are of Christ, then you must carry his DNA. Scattered in here, inside and outside, there are people, listen, who are yet to give their lives to Christ. You have never made a decision. Or perhaps there are people you have been coming out for altar call everywhere you go, but you don't understand fully what you are doing. Or there are people who have given their lives to Christ, but for some reason, honestly, sincerely before God, the cares of this life, the pressures of this life have pushed you to a point where you know that you need to come back to your first love. These three categories of people. Please, very quickly, we have two minutes to receive you. Wherever you are, inside and outside, the Lord is speaking to you. Leave your seat and come right to the front. God bless you. God bless you. I appreciate them as they come. I believe there are people the Lord is speaking to. Don't wait for anybody to come. You are the first person. Wherever you are, make sure you don't sit back if God is talking to you. There are people outside. God bless you. Keep coming. Please don't sit back. I believe there are more people God is speaking to them. He's saying you need to come to the cross. Don't play games with your destiny. No one will force you. But then you are opening up yourself to a life of victory, a life of grace. Two minutes, please. Make your way to the front. If there are people coming from outside, make way for them. Hallelujah. Quickly, quickly. We have one more minute. Are there more people coming? God bless you. God bless you. Quickly. If you're coming, please hurry up. Let's stretch our hands towards them and pray for them. If there's anyone joining them, you, you join quickly as we pray. Look at me, all of you in front. Please look at me. I'm going to lead you into this prayer. God bless you, my brother. Look at me, please. Gentlemen, can you look at me just in one minute? I want to pray for you. My darling lady wants to join. Come and join, my dear. Don't feel bad. Thank you for making this decision. This is a decision unto the Lord. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say after me, from the depth of your heart, dear Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. And I believe you died for me. You shed your blood for my sin. I ask you, to come into my heart be my Lord be my Savior from today the power of sin is broken over my life I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus I receive the power to live a victorious life in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father I stretch my hands over your people I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that this decision will mark a new season in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every weight, every weight of the flesh and everything that destroys your passion for God, we arrest right now in the name of Jesus. Let this begin a journey that will never end. In the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for this great decision. I'd like you to please rise and follow the gentleman waving his hands. They welcome you more warmly on our behalf. Then they'll have details. Bless you. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto pray kate kene kata.
the face of development lord grant me the discipline 